Hello friends. This is Revenger what if how are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto awakened the new sage of six paths and got harem. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Uzushiogakir was the shinobi village of the land of whirlpools. Its founder ninja clan the Uzumaki were renowned throughout the world for their great fuinjutsu skills to the point that it led to their destruction during the second great ninja war by the combined forces of Hoshigakure. Kusagakir, Takigakir and an unknown force but those who survived the village's destruction scattered across the globe seeking refuge however before the fall of Uzushiogakir the daimyo of the land of Whirlpool sent his youngest daughter Kashina Uzumaki to Konohagakir so she could become their Jinchuriki for the Nine Tails Fox because only someone with a strong body hold it and every single Uzumaki had one as they were the descendant of the legendary sage of Six Paths who was the first god of Shinobi and the founder of Ninshu and his name was Hagoromo Atsusuki. Seven years after the Kayubi attack all since Naruto could remember from his earliest memories was that almost every single person in Konoha had treated him worse than dirt and they call him things like demon spawn monster freak murderer and when he was four years old the women who run the Konoha's orphanage kicked Naruto out and said demons don't deserve to be taken care of two months after Hiruzen's Anbu found Naruto in a dark alley they then took Naruto to Hiruzen Serutobi the third Hokage where he set up an apartment for Naruto at the red light district and sometimes the villagers would even attack him and all Hiruzen would do was send them to jail for just one night and then let them go scot-free because of the civilians council would cause trouble for Hiruzen if he did anything to them but today on Naruto's seventh birthday a mob of villagers decided that they were going to finally kill Naruto. The current time ever since Naruto could remember from his earliest memories was that almost every single person in Konohagakure has treated him worse than even dirt and they have called him things like, demon spawn, monster, freak, murderer, and when he was four years old the women who run the Konoha's orphanage kicked Naruto out saying, demons don't deserve to be taken care of. It was two months before the third Hokage Hiruzen Serutobi Enbu Black Ops found Naruto in a dark alley cold. Scared and hungry, so they then took Naruto straight to Hiruzen's office where he set up an apartment for Naruto to live in at the red light district. However, sometimes the villagers would even attack Naruto, and all Hiruzen would do to them is send them to jail for just one night and then let them go scot free because of the civilians' council would cause trouble for Hiruzen if he did anything else to them for defending themselves from the demon. But today was different on Naruto's fifth birthday, a mob of villagers had designed that they were going to finally kill Naruto. It was late at and Naruto was walking home from Ichiraku. Ramen his most favorite place before the two chunin. Who were hired by the mob and where they were promised. That if they bring Naruto without being caught they would promote them to Jonin rank with their connections to the civil and council so when they found Naruto they quickly drag him into a nearby dark alley before knocking him out cold and took him to where the mod told them to meet up with them which was in an abandoned warehouse near the outskirts of Konoha and once they handed Naruto over to the mod they immediately began to beat on him brutally. As the mob continued their attack on Naruto something within him changed and suddenly a bolt of lightning came down from the sky hitting Naruto directly as well. As the mod that were surrounded him and as the dust cleared it revealed that Naruto was unharmed from the lightning bolt however it cannot be said for the people who were closest to Naruto as they wasn't so lucky because they were dead and their bodies were completely burnt. And as for the people who abbot further away they received burn marks all over their bodies and as for the rest of the mod they just stood there and stare incomplete shock and were also scare shitless that if they did anything even move an inch something might happen to them as well but then something else surprising happened naruto stood up and as he did the mod saw that all the bruise and cuts they given to him began to heal themselves and soon not even a scar was visible and then they saw naruto's eyes and instead of his normal bright blue eyes they were pale purple with a ripple pattern that spreads over his eyeballs the mob then try to run away like cowards seeing that things have turned around for the worst for them but then black hand sized orbs appeared behind Naruto and flew past him hitting every single one of mod and made them suffer beyond imagination before it finally killing them then the black orbs disappear and Naruto eyes turn back to their normal color before Naruto pass out on the floor. 
Within Naruto's mind suddenly Naruto's eyes snap open and he found himself in an unknown place it was dark but light was shining from the ocean. Where am I, Naruto said to himself. I see that you are finally awake good, said a voice behind Naruto. Naruto quickly turned around and saw a tall and pale skinned old man, who had deep wrinkles and a strong jawline. His eyes were pale purple with a ripple pattern that spreads over his eyeballs, he had spiky, shoulder length, pale red hair, with a chin length, braided lock hanging in front of his left ear. He had a goatee which went down to his waist. The old man had a pair of horn like protrusions extending from either side of his forehead, and he also had a red marking in the center of his forehead, which was a ripple pattern just like his eyes. He wore a white, full length kimono with a pattern of six black magatama around a high collar, beneath which, he wore a necklace which was also made up of six black magatama. On the back of his kimono was a larger, black verizon of his eyes marking with a pattern of nine magatama arranged in three rows of three beneath it however what was the most strangest thing was that the old man wasn't standing instead he was hovering above the ground with nine black orbs below him. Hello Naruto Uzumaki, said the old man. Who are you mister and how do you know my name, Naruto asked curiously. My name is Hagoromo Otsutsuki and the reason why I know your name is because you are a very important person, said Hagoromo. Me, important you got to be wrong Mr. I'm a nobody, said Naruto. But that's where you are very wrong Naruto because you see that you are extremely important to this world, said Hagoromo. I'm extremely important to the world, said Naruto. Because I have seen it within you, said Hagoromo. Within me what do you mean Mr., said Naruto. These eyes of my can see your very soul and by seeing it I am able to see your potential Naruto, said Hagoromo. My potential, said Naruto. Yes and I am able to see that you are capable of changing this world for the better, said Hagoromo. I can change this world, said Naruto. Yes you can however after seeing all the horrors that you have gone through I have decided that I will help you Naruto, said Hagoromo. Really but I don't know who you are, said Naruto. Then let me fix that as I said my name is Hagoromo Otsutsuki and I was the sage of six paths and the creator of this shinobi world, said Hagoromo. What? You were the WHO created ninjutsu, Naruto shouted. No I was the one who created ninshu it was my elder son Indra who changed it and made it into ninjutsu that you know today, said Hagoromo. Ninshu I never heard that before, said Naruto. It has been lost to time and the only remnants of it is ninjutsu said Hagoromo. Why is that? said Naruto. Because people desired power and ninjutsu is just that but that's not improvement right now my boy as I have watch over this world ever since my death and throughout everything I have seen in this world you are one of the most unki being I have ever seen to be able to endure all the pain from your villagers, said Hagoromo. I don't know why they hate me so much, said Naruto. It is because you hold one of my children within you, said Hagoromo. One of your children within me what do you mean, Naruto asked. On the day of your birth one of my children attacked the hidden leaf village but was stopped by your fourth Hokage by putting my child inside of you, said Hagoromo. But I heard that the fourth Hokage killed the nine tails five years ago, said Naruto. No he didn't a normal human being cannot truly take down one of my children even if how gifted they might be so he did something else he sealed Kurama within you Naruto, said Hagoromo. Then what the villagers say is true I'm really am a monster, said Naruto. Oh no you are not my boy you see you are just a sealing scroll and Kurama is the kanai seal inside of it, said Hagoromo. Who is Kurama? Naruto asked curiously. That's the nine-tailed fox true name is, said Hagoromo. Then he's the monster not me, said Naruto. No he is not and the reason why he attacked your village is because of Mask Man took control over him and ordered Kurama to do it said Hagoromo. A mask man who is he, said Naruto. That is something I don't know someone or something has prevented me found finding out the truth, said Hagoromo. Preventing you but how, said Naruto. I don't know how but this isn't the first time I sended something working in the shadows causing chaos in the world, said Hagoromo. Causing chaos in the world, said Naruto. Yes which is why I have decided to stop it though you, said Hagoromo. Though me but I'm just a kid, said Naruto. That is true but I have a way to help you Naruto, said Hagoromo. Help me get stronger how, said Naruto. 
It's actually rather simple really I will give you all of my power Naruto, said Hagoromo. Give me your power how's that possible, Naruto asked curiously. You just have to take hold of this, said Hagoromo. Suddenly out of nowhere Black Kakara Staff appeared in front of Naruto. By taking hold of this all of my knowledge, power and even my abilities which people now call bloodlines will be transferred over to you, said Hagoromo. What really, Naruto asked curiously. Yes and I know that your parents had sealed the last bit of their chakras into you and so I will use it and grant you all of their knowledge as well, said Hagoromo. After think about it for a little while Naruto desire and reach out and took hold of the Kakara and just as he did he felt his head was about to explode with all the knowledge transferring over to him and when it was finally over Naruto fell down onto the floor. There it is finally done I look forward to see what will you do with your new power, said Hagoromo. Konoha's hospital Naruto slowly opened his eyes and found himself in his familiar hospital room and was laying down on a familiar bed Naruto realized that this was the hospital room where he would be taken to after the villagers attacks but just the door open and it revealed the third Hokage Hiruzen Serutobi who walk in. Arranged by Naruto my boy your final awake I was worried, Hiruzen said in a kind tone. W what happened? Naruto asked whilst he rubbed both of his eyes. My Anbu found you unconscious inside a warehouse, said Hiruzen. Oh yeah, said Naruto. Naruto there were dead bodies of villagers all around you and they were burnt to a crisp tell me honestly what happened in that warehouse, Hiruzen asked Sirius. I can tell him most of the truth except for the parts about my bloodline and the Kayubi I don't know what he may do to me if he found out the truth, Naruto thought to himself. All I remember was that I was walking home from Ichiraku Ramen before two men dragged me to a dark alley and knocking me out and when I woke up I was surrounded by a mob then all of them attacked me then everything went dark and now woke up here, said Naruto. Come I know that the Kayubi didn't take control of him or everyone in the village would have felt its dark chakra so what happened to those villagers and why do I feel Naruto is hiding something from me he would never hide something from me he trust me completely I better place some Anbu to keep track of him just in case, thought Hiruzen. Hey Hokage san, I don't feel bad or hurt, can I go? Naruto asked in a hurry. Yes, you can, Naru. Wait, did you just call me Hokage san instead of old man? Hiruzen asked in shock. Yeah, you don't want to hear me calling you old man now, do you, Hokage san? Naruto said as he put up his clothes. No, you're right, I don't, but still, Hiruzen said, confused. Okay, I got to go, said Naruto as he rushed out of the hospital room. Now I know there's something wrong with this I better order my Anbu to keep an eye on him right away, Hiruzen said to himself. With Naruto Naruto was running towards something every special place and away from the hospital because of two reasons first was that now that Naruto has both of Minato's and Kashina's memories he now where his real home was the Uzumaki clan compound where his mother grew up when she first came to the village from her home village Uzushiogakure a village created by the Uzumaki clan but was destroyed during the third great ninja war and the second reason why Naruto left in a hurry was that now he know the truth he didn't know what to think about the Hokage he keep the truth about where Naruto truly come from. Why the villagers hated him so much and where he true home was sure the Hokage protected him so that the villagers didn't try to kill him until now but the Hokage never did anything to them and always told him to forgive them or try to understand them after everything they did to him. As Naruto got closer to the compound he ran past a couple of Sakura trees and as he looked at them he started to remember something happened that he wasn't involved in and it was about back when his mother just moved. To Konohagakure she was bullied by boys in her class. Because of her red hair and one day one of the bullies. Grabbed it and started to pull it but Kashina had enough. And started to beat up all the bullies and Naruto's. Father, Minato was watching everything however later. That day as Kashina made her way home though the Sakura. Trees the bully who pull her hair stop her alongside. His older brother who was a genin and the older brother. Beat Kashina up and told her that the village will. Never accept any outsiders but just like before in. The classroom Kashina started had enough and started. To beat the older brother up as well as give him two. Black eyes and then she beat the little brother again and once she was finished she look up and saw Minato standing on a tree branch watching the whole event but because Naruto now had all of his memories he knew that when Minato was walking home he saw the brothers and overheard them talking about what they going to Kashina so Minato decided he wasn't going to allow that to happen but once he got to the Sakura trees he watched as Kashina beat the brothers up. 
When Naruto finally reached the Uzumaki clan compound, he saw that it was the same size as the Uchiha clan. And Hyuga clan compounds with an large wall that surrounded the compound and haven't weakened over the years since. No one has lived there and taken care of it and as Naruto walked to the only gate which was large and had no handles but instead it had a seal which most cover it but Naruto knew thanks to his parents memories that the seal was designed to allow only clan members and other people who got permission from clan members and all they had to do was put a drop of blood on the center of the seal to open gates and they only have to do that once because after they would be allow entry all the time so Naruto bit his thumb hard enough which caused it to bleed then he put a drop of blood on the center of the seal which caused it to glow then the gates open. Naruto then looked drop at his thumb wondering where could he find something to cover it until it healed itself but was surprised when he saw that there wasn't anything wrong with it like he didn't just bit his thumb and made it bleed which made he wonder sure he heal fast before but never this fast but now wasn't the time to think about it instead it was time to see his home. As Naruto entered the compound he saw that the style for it was traditional fashion like many other clan compounds in Konoha. Think traditional Japanese style. It had the Uzumaki clan symbol on the inside of the wall that surrounded the compound and all the tiles on the roof of each building were red and as Naruto walk around the compound he saw that it has a large dining room. A kitchen, living room, a garden, a large natural garden pond with wooden bridge which was painted red going over it, a training yard, a very large library, a large armory where the Uzumaki clan kept their weapons, a storerooms, a large safe where the Uzumaki clan kept its most powerful items and many bedrooms and two master bedrooms as well as many bathrooms nearby. As Naruto continued to walk around the compound he saw his bedroom the room that if his parents were still alive and he was raised here in the Uzumaki clan compound would have been his but because of the event that happened on his birth allow side the Kyubi attack cause him not to. I'm almost truly home, Naruto said to himself, later. That day Naruto tested himself using the flying thunder jutsu to see if he had good control over it to which he found that he did meaning that he could use it to escape from Konoha as soon as possible by teleporting himself to Minato's teleport spot that was closest to the land of Whirlpool Naruto's ancestor homeland and lucky for Naruto Minato did a teleport spot near on the border of the land of fire afterwards Naruto went back to his apartment and seal up everything that he owned before teleporting back to the compound but not before creating a shadow clone to stay in Konoha so Naruto could reach the land of Whirlpool without Konoha knowing. On that night Naruto left Konoha and teleported to Minato's waypoint and made his way to the land of Whirlpool where he discovered that the village was in ruins and from what he could see it has been like this for many years. I'm truly home, Naruto said happily, after looking around for a bit Naruto decided it was time. I better get started, said Naruto. Naruto looked down at his palms and saw the light colored, sun like marking on his right palm and the dark colored crescent moon like marking on his left palm then Naruto ready his hands and turn on his Rinnegan like he had it for years. Yin Yang style. Arc of time restore, Naruto said as he clapped his hands and suddenly a great light was emitted from which then covered all of Uzushiogakure and when it was finally over Uzushiogakure was restored it but to what it was before the combine attack on it. It's kind of obvious but the arc of time is a time space ninjutsu in this story law. Let's make this place great again. Naruto said to himself. Five years later it has over five years since Naruto became the new sage of six paths, escape from Konoha and live in restore Uzushiogakure he had been busy because thought out the years Naruto had become known though out the world disbid being so young and instead he was calling himself Zarif Atsusuki where he is a skill ronin. Naruto had also recruited many allies and used Uzushiogakure for his base. He knew that that Hiruzen, Jiraiya Naruto's, godfather, and Danzo Shimura the head of Root would be hunting him down so he decided to change both his name and apprentice a bit as well when wasn't in Uzushiogakure so he wore a cloth mask to hide with a seal on it that changes his appreciate whenever he put it on and it made his skin pale and pale red hair. It also makes his hair go into the same style as Zarif from Fairy Tale. And as for his eyes they turn into a dark purple color. But Naruto's true apprentice was that his hair was in the same shaggy style similar to Minato's hair but his bright blonde hair that he got from Minato had turned into a more lighter blonde. His eyes had became a more lighter shade of blue with and slanted with slit pupiled. He is now 5 foot 4 tall 1, because of all his training and now having a good food supply his body had became silm yet slightly toned. 
Naruto wears the same outfit for both his true and fake identities a high collared black and tan robes with gold trim. Along with a large, flowing white toga draped around his torso. To honor his clan he had a dog tag around his neck and that the symbol for the Uzumaki clan on it. He also had two seals on his wrists and he had armbands to cover them and on his left wrist was one designed to stop the Hyuga clan bloodline the Byakugan being able to see their chakra network so they can't close them it was similar to the seal that stop anyone with the Byakugan to see inside the Uzumaki clan compound and on his right wrist was one destiny to stop the Uchiha clan's bloodline the Sharingan being able to copying any of their jutsus or techniques. The first person to join up with Naruto and the most shock was a man known as Log Senju and he was created as a synthetic human by his father Orochimaru, being cultivated from an embryo and was given the name Mitsuki until Naruto free him and he then changed it to Log later on after and the person that Orochimaru chose to be his mother was none other than his former teammate Tsunade Senju. The reason why Orochimaru created him was to continue his legacy if something happened to Orochimaru or become Orochimaru's vessel but Log was set free by Naruto when he came to Orochimaru's southern hideout in the land of waves and free all the other prisoners who Orochimaru used for his experiments. The second person to join was Yoda of the Kurosuke clan and he wasn't alive when Naruto first meet him because he had died five years before Naruto was born he had died by natural causes due to his frail body but he was later revived by Orochimaru as a test subject in his research on the impure world reincarnation technique which was a kinjutsu created by the second Hokage Tobarama Senju. Yoda was sent to Konohagakure on Orochimaru's command, where he met Choji of the Akamichi clan. Shikamaru of the Nara clan. And Ino of the Yamanaka clan later on he met other. Children from the leaf however Yoda knew that he was. Going to return to the land of the dead so he erased. Their memory of him preventing them being sad when he leaves them however after he left Yoda ran into Naruto who had returned to Konohagakure only to retrieve the Shinigami mask that belonged to the Uzumaki clan and when he meet Yoda he saw that Aur wasn't actually alive so Naruto used the outer path samsara of heavenly life technique to bring yoda truly back to life giving him a second chance at life and as naruto offered yoda a place at uzushiogakure which he happily accepted the third person was another who also dead like yoda but he died recently and he joined not to after yoda joined his name was shisui of the uchiha clan or otherwise known as shisui the teleporter a shinobi of the hidden leaf village Shisui and his best friend Itachi Uchiha the eldest son of the Uchiha clan head Fugaku Uchiha were secretly working for Konoha to prevent the Uchiha clan from starting a coup to overthrow the Konoha leadership which would have ended up creating a civil war within Konoha. Their plan was for Shishi to use his Mangeku Sharingan and perform the Koto Amatsukami a powerful Jinjutsu technique which allows the user to enter the mind of any individual within their field of view, and manipulate them by giving them false experiences making it seem as if they were doing things of their own free will. However as Shisui prepared to make his move, Danzo Shimura the leader of an organization known as Root within Konoha, believing that simply manipulating the Uchiha's leader wouldn't end the conflict and that he would eventually try to manipulate him as well, chose to take Shisui's eyes for himself in the desire to protect the village in his own way. While Shisui effortlessly subdued Danzo at first, the ruthless elder caught Shisui off guard by using the forbidden technique known as Izanagi with another Sharingan he had already obtained to break free and steal Shisui's right eye. As Danzo and his men surrounded Shisui to take his remaining eye, Shisui managed to escape and met up with Itachi and told him what has happened fearing that Danzo was right in Shisui's inability to stop the Uchiha's revolt and that the elder would continue to pursue his left eye as well. Shisui entrusted it to Itachi telling him to protect both the village and the Uchiha name before committing suicide which awoke in Itachi own Mangeku Sharingan. When Naruto heard about Shisui he thought on how useful of a shinobi like he would be for Uzushiogakure so. After obtained Shisui's body and performed the outer path samsara of heavenly life technique, but in a different way from what he did with Yoda and brought Shisui back to life and then he used his young seal on his right palm to recreate Shisui's eyes as well make sure that they would never go blind by making them similar to that of Indra's Sharingan eyes and afterwards Naruto offered Shisui a place at Uzushiogakure as well as the chance for revenge against Danzo for what he did to which Shisui agreed to. What I am saying is that Yoda meets Shikamaru. Choji and Ino not long after the Uchiha clan massacre where Naruto came back to Konohagakure to get the Shinigami mask and later he brought both Yato and Shisui back to life. 
The fourth was Sebas Tien a highly skilled and talented man who was known though out the world as the god of death back when he was in his prime both Sebas and Hirazan Serutobi were offered the chance to gain the title of god of shinobi but Sebas turned it down so the title was given to Hirazan and back when Naruto was traveling around the world he met Sebas Tien and managed to convince Sebas Tien to join Uzu Shiogakure. The fifth was a gang of missing Ninfushin. Chino and Karyu all of who used to serve a man known as En Oyashiro before they managed to escape from his mansion and form the lightning group which they started helping the villagers of the bamboo village by stealing money and other valuables from the rich and giving it to the poor villagers. In return the group was given food and shelter until Kirigakir frequently employed the lightning group during Yagura's reign. However later on Yagura decided to eliminate the group in order to increase the relationship with the frost daimyo. The group escaped from the assassination attempt but was betrayed by the villagers it helped out of fear of retaliation from Kirigakure however Naruto saved them from the Kiri ninjas and then recruited them as well as helped them get their revenge on the bamboo village and help the other people who were still at Enoyashiro mansion which afterwards they to join Naruto as well they also stole the entire mansion thanks to Naruto using enhanced Verizon of the flying thunder jutsu to teleport it to the land of Whirlpool. Sixth was all the shinobis that liked the lightning group used to be were owned by rich noblemen and women like en oyashiro and were forced to fight against others for money until naruto and his allies free them all and they stole all of the noblemen and women money and allow their former servants to decide what to do with them and offer them to join up as well which every single one of them agreed to and like what naruto did he went to all of their mansions free the others as well as steal the entire mansion and teleported to the land of whirlpool Naruto had also created advanced human likes puppies thanks to the knowledge from Hagoromo that he was able to make them and which he can control easily and they will be able to work by themselves without him or anyone around and have the power to weld energy blasts for attacks by use the small versions of the energy vessel orb that was inside of them and gave them abilities similar to people who were sensor type to help them to find anyone. They are stronger and faster than normal human being as well most trained shinobi. Like all shinobi puppets they contain weapons within and with the advanced fuenjutsu known as enchantments they can act like human beings. They all look identical to the other and they all worn the same outfit a black kimono with hood, black gloves, black boots, six white magatama on their chest, wrap bandage around their head face arms legs and on their hood they had a black sash around their head and a golden uzumaki clan crest in the middle. Together Naruto and Sebas Tien created an organization of shinobi and samurai which they took jobs called just like the ninja villages but they didn't have loyalty to the nobles of any lands yet and this organization was called this organization of theirs legion. Together Naruto and Sebas Tien created an organization of shinobi and samurai which they took jobs called just like the ninja villages but they didn't have loyalty to the nobles of any lands yet and this organization was called legion. Current time at the land of Whirlpool Uzushiakure is a large island with several smaller islands surrounding it and was surrounded by tall rock wall. It looks just like the kingdom of Sindria from Magi the Labyrinth of Magic, and it had couple large mansions which used to be owned by the wealthy noble men and women before Naruto free their shinobis and took their mansion then turned them into apartments for their shinobi if they wished to live there and clan compounds housing the clans that Naruto managed to convince to join Uzu Shiogakure and Legion like Uryuki the Ice Mistress for mastery over her ice release bloodline and many other powerful people. At Azukaj mansion Naruto was sitting on the Azukaj throne and stood in front of him was Sebas Tien the god of death his appearances was an elderly butler and he is dressed gracefully in his traditional black uniform. His hair is entirely white, just like his immaculate beard. He has visible wrinkles on his hollow face, which makes him seem gentle in appearance, but his eyes are as sharp as an eagle's. Sebas I think it's time for us to start making alliance with other lands, said Naruto. Hum I believe you're right said Sebas. I think we should start with somewhere small, said Naruto. That is a good idea but which one? said Sebas. The land of waves it is knowledge for it being one of the best countries for shipping and they don't have any ninjas or samurai of their own and they ain't alliance with any village so they will be perfect to start with, said Naruto. I see that as a good start and who will go, said Sebas. I will and I know how to convince them to join us, said Naruto. And that is, Sebas asked curiously. The country is currently is being bullied by Gato the head of Gato company and his army of thugs they even kill the daimyo of the land of waves so killing Gato will make the people of the land of waves would make them happy with us for killing him and they will be happy to make alliance with us and besides I already have a way to get close to Gato, said Naruto. Which is, said Sebas. 
Gato has been trying to get in touch with Night Raid so I'll use that to get close to him and learn anything useful before killing, said Naruto. A well thought out plan is always Naruto, said Sebas. Thank you Sebas could you stay here and keep order, said Naruto. Of course, said Sebas, a couple days later Naruto. Was currently walking though the forest in the land. Of waves towards hidden headquarters as Naruto looked at it he saw that it wasn't a tall building but he guessed Gato had built it underground inside and this part was just the entrance but the thing that still caught his attention was that ever though he can see the base he still couldn't sense anyone from it which is strange so he decided to investigate about it to see if it could be useful in the future so Naruto then slammed his right hand down to the ground. Summoning just you said naruto as a seal appeared on the ground around his right hand and in a proof of smoke a dark purple snake with the rinnegan eyes appeared go to gato's base said naruto and the snake did just that as naruto and the snake got closer to gato's hideout minnows disappointed hey kid what the hell are you thinking of being here said one of the two large guards standing outside the entrance i'm here to see gato said naruto yeah said who said the same guard he ordered me to come here, said Naruto. What if I don't believe you what then, said the same guard. I don't care if you believe me or not let us though now, said Naruto. Ha and you're going to make me, said the same guard. A sinister smile came upon Naruto before he spoke, hell yeah, and then he just vanishing. The two guards were shocked only for a second before Naruto reappeared at the left side of the guard who spoke to him and sent a strong kick at his left arm which broke it. ARRRRR. The guard shouted in pain and the other guard just stood there in shock. So are you going to let us though, said Naruto at the other guard. Why yeah oh of course, said the other guard scared for what he just saw. Inside of a room a snake made its way in Gato's base it went into a and hid in the shadows just in case it saw a man resting on a bed whilst the boy that saved Zabaza's life and wasn't wearing a mask so anyone could see that he had brown eyes and that he was sitting down next to Zabuza peeling apples until a small man who was wearing a business suit on and had sunglasses on with two other men that had swords strap on them. Zabuza I have heard from my men that Tazuna is still alive why is that, said the small man. I underestimate the shinobi that Tazuna has hired Gato, said Zabuza. When I hire you I expected results you being the demon of the mist, after all, said Gato. Don't worry about it I got a plan you see, said Zabuza. Oh what is it, said Gato. Simple really we let them get close to finish the bridge but then Haku and I come in and kill the Konoha ninjas and Tazuna then we destroy the bridge which will destroy any remaining hope that these people have left, said Zabuza. Yes, that would work perfectly, said Gato Gato, then started to walk towards Zabuza. However, Zabuza, if you do fail me again, then neither you or your assistants will leave this land alive, said Gato as he reached out to grab Zabuza's face. But as he did, the boy that was sitting next to Zabuza quickly grabbed Gato's wrist and broke it. Air! Gato screamed in pain. Don't you lay a finger on Zabuza San, said the boy. Gato's bodyguards both went and was about to grab their swords but Gato used his other hand to tell not to and then he went towards the door. Just make sure everything goes accordingly plan Zabuza or else, said Gato before he left the room. Sometime later with Naruto at Gato's throne room Naruto stood in front Gato who was currently sitting on his throne with his two samurai bodyguards at both sides and the room was filled with Gato's men as well. When I contacted the Legion organization I wanted some strong ninjas and samurais but instead they only send me a single child, shouted Gato angrily. Hey boss I don't think you should underestimate this kid I heard a lot of things about this him, said Zori. Oh really but first you broke one of my guards arm care to explain that boy, said Gato. He wouldn't let us pass and anyway if I a child could break him arm so easily he wouldn't be a good guard now would he, said Naruto. Hum you're right and that I don't have to pay him, said Gato. Fine then I'll give you a chance but you better be worth every Ryo, said Gato. I am so going to enjoy killing him, Naruto thought. Now kid I want you to kill the bridge builder Tazuna as well as the Konoha ninjas that he hired, said Gato. Konoha, Naruto thought angrily. Actually I have a better idea, said Naruto. Oh what is it, Gato asked curiously. It's simple really we let them get close to finish the bridge but then Haku, Zabuza and I come in and. 
kill Tazuna as well as the Konoha ninjas and then finally we destroy the bridge which will destroy any remaining hope of fighting against you that these people have left, said Naruto. Yes that would work perfectly, Gato said smiling evilly. That night as Naruto was stealthy walking down a hallway in Gato's base until he finally came to Gato's vault which he where he kept everything that he has taken from the villagers and other things however it was heavily guarded and it had advanced lock on it and the only way to get in was with a unique key that no doubt that Gato kept on him all time however it wasn't nearly enough to stop Naruto from getting inside as he quickly teleported inside the vault. As he walked around in the vault he saw books, paintings, statues, large bags of money and then Naruto saw it in the middle of the room a light green glowing crystal orb that had red seals all over it. This is it, said Naruto as he looked at the orb. These seals and this orb are similar to the ones at the compound and around my wrist but there is couple of differences this is probably the thing which is preventing me and anyone else from sensing anyone here but if that the case why does Gato have something like this perhaps a shinobi that he hired inform him about it and he decided to use it so if anyone sends any assassins after him they wouldn't be able to find him, thought Naruto. Naruto decided that he come back later on take only Gato's money whilst giving all the villagers their money that was taken from them which will make it even easier to get them to make an alliance with Legion and he will also take the orb and use it for Uzushiogakure must then he undid his summon returning it to where it came from before he teleported out of the vault. That went well, Naruto said himself, afterwards Naruto went over to Zabuza and Haku room. Zabuza Momochi the demon of the mist and Haku Yuki, said Naruto. Who are you? said Haku. My name is Zarif Atsusuki and I wish to talk with both of you, said Naruto. I have heard about this kid he's a member of Legion, thought Zabuza. Fine what excelly do you want from us, said Zabuza. I'm here with an offer for you too, said Naruto. A offer what kind of offer, said Zabuza. A place within my village, said Naruto. Your village so Legion does have connection with a village so which one, said Zabuza. Yuzuo Shiogakure, Naruto said shocking Zabuza. Impossible, Yuzuo Shio was destroyed during the second great ninja war, said Zabuza. Correct but Legion and I have rebuilt it and we have been gathered many allies, said Naruto. You rebuilt Yuzuo Shio but you're just a brat, said Zabuza. Age doesn't matter in the world of shinobi only power, said Naruto. Fair enough Haku what do you think, said Zabuza. I would follow you anyway Zabuza San, said Haku. In fact Haku I already have many your clansmen's a part of my village, Naruto said shocking Haku. But I thought I was the last of my clan, said Haku. No just like what your mother did many others also survived as well, said Naruto. Hem, it would be nice to get stop running alright fine we'll join, said Zabuza. Perfect now I can give you this, Naruto said as he reached his pocket and brought bag and he then took out a small green bean that was inside. Here you got, Naruto said before he threw it Zabuza who caught it. What is this it's just a bean, said Zabuza. Just trust me and eat it, said Naruto. Alright, said Zabuza. As Zabuza ate and swallow at the small green bean he immediately the effects from it that all of his wounds and shikara were fully restored and he didn't felt hungry at all. What the hell? What kind of bin was that? Zabuza said amazed. That was a senzu bean it's something that we have been growing at the land of Whirlpool and as you can see it has very unique properties, said Naruto. Yes this is the senzu beans from Dragon Ball, with something like this food rations won't be a problem, said Zabuza. Anyways you two will stay here for now as the true reason why I am here is to get the land of waves to form alliance with this, said Naruto. I see how exactly do you intend to do that, Zabuza asked. You will you see, said Naruto, the next day below the bridge. As Naruto, Haku and Zabura arrive at the unfinished bridge the saw men still working on it. Don't kill anyone it will make it easier for the people to join our land if they don't have any hate towards it, Naruto told them which they agree to. Water style. Hiding Miss Jutsu, said Zabura. As Zabura finished a mist appear covering the area where the men are working then Naruto and the others went into it and because they have been trained in mist they would able to find the men easily and knock them out. They waited a couple minutes until they heard people coming. What the hell happened here, said a old man. Kakashi Hitaki had spiky silver hair and dark grey eye, he wore a mask over the nose and lower half of his face, he was wearing a flak jacket, dark blue pants, 
and a long sleeve shirt. He also wears fingerless gloves with metal plates on the backhand and is seen with a chain necklace underneath. Kakashi Hitaki was a famous shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village and the was remaining member Studdent of the 4th Hokage Minato Namikaze. There is no denying it is Zabura, said in a man with grey colour hair. Sorry for keeping you waiting Kakashi however I see that those brats of yours are still trembling in fear how pitiful. Zabuza's voice came somewhere within the mist. Sasuke had black hair boy wearing a blue shirt with a high collar and black shorts, on the back of his collar was the Uchiha clan symbol. Sasuke was the only remaining member of the Uchiha clan before his own brother kill everyone including their parents and that brother name was Itachi Uchiha. Sasuke was the last remaining member of the Uchiha clan in Konoha after his own brother kill everyone else in their clan including their parents. It's because I'm trembling in excitement, said Sasuke bravely. Oh you're different from last time boy, Zabuza said within the mist. Just then Zabuza and Haku appeared however Zabuza was wearing a black sleeveless shirt and matching pants, complete with a waist guard, striped wrist and leg warmers and the bandages around his face were loosely like a scarf and Haku was wearing the same outfit that he wore when he saved Zabuza. It's time to end our match Kakashi, said Zabuza. Sakura you stay close to Tazuna and guard while Sasuke and I handle Zabuza and his partner, said Kakashi. Sakura had long pink hair which reached down to her lower back and was wearing tight dark green shorts that stopped over her knees. She has a red kipao dress on with white circular designs which also has short sleeves. Sakura of the Haruno family which was a large civilian family which had many connections to other rich civilian families of Konoha. Sakura was from the Haruno family which was a large civilian families that had connections and Sakura's mother Mebuki Haruno was a member of the civilian council. Sai you'll handle the new kid just be carefully we don't know anything about him, said Kakashi. Sai Shimura has short, straight black hair, and dark eyes which contrast with his translucent looking pale skin, he is usually seen carrying a small backpack with his brush, scrolls, and ninja ink in it. He wears a short black and grey jacket with red straps, he also carries a tip less tonto on his back, the rest of his outfit consisted of a high collared midriff shirt, black pants, shinobi sandals and gloves with his index and thumb fingers exposed, most likely to facilitate the use of his drawing based techniques, his jacket had short left sleeves. Actually Kakashi you may have heard about him, said Zabura pointing at Naruto. For starters his name is Zarif Atsusuki and he's a member of Legion, said Zabura shocking them even more. That Zarif Atsusuki but he just a kid the same age as these three, thought Kakashi. Enough for this talk let us finish what we came here to do and fight, said Zabura. Actually Kakashi you may have heard about him, said Zabura pointing at Naruto. For starters his name is Zarif Atsusuki and he's a member of Legion, said Zabura shocking them even more. That's Zarif Atsusuki but he's just a kid the same age as these three, thought Kakashi. Enough for this talk let us finish what we came here to do and fight, said Zabura. Current time just then four Zabuzas appeared surrounding Kakazi, Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna however as the clones try to attack Sasuke use Kanai to cut of them up turning them back into puddles of water. I can see it now, thought Sasuke. Oh so you can see that they were water clones this genin has improved it looks like you got yourself a reveal Haku, said Zabuza. So it would seems, said Haku however he was wondering where was Naruto. I have been looking forward to this fight said Sasuke. Then let's see how much you have improved then Haku you know what to do, said Zabuza. Yes Zabuza san, said Haku before he started to spin around so fast making it almost impossible to see him at all however just as he was close to Sasuke and was about to cut him with his kanai Sasuke managed to block it with own. You managed to block my attack not many people can do that because of my speed most impressive, said Haku. You shouldn't expect anything less from an elite ninja like me. Sasuke said with a smile. However I had key advices over you, said Haku. Yay like what? Sasuke asked wanting to know what kind of key advices this guy has over him. First we are surrounded by water and second you only have one arm left to defend yourself from my next attack, said Haku. So what I will just counter it with ease, said Sasuke. I highly doubt you can counter something like this with ease said Haku as he started to do hand signs with only just one hand. What he can perform ninjutsu with just one hand, 
Sasuke thought in shock. He's excitedly skilled to be able to that, thought Naruto. I never heard of a ninja that can perform ninjutsu with only one hand, said Kakashi. Haku is a prodily unlike any other Kakashi, said Zabuza. Water style. Secret jutsu. Thousand flying water needles of death, said Haku as he gathered water from what used to be Zabuza's water clones and from the misty air and created many needles made out of water which surrounded him and Sasuke and then Haku used his control over them to fire all them only at Sasuke. Sasuke-kun. Sakura shouted in worry. I just have to remember Kakashi's training just I got to focus my chakra and summon it at once on my feet like with the trees, thought Sasuke as he used his chakra to enhance his jumping speed for a brief moment to avoid Haku's needles. He vanished, said Haku but he looked up in the air and saw Sasuke who was just about to throw a couple shuriken at Haku however as he did Haku managed to dodge each of them however Sasuke appeared behind him. You're not as fast as you think you are from this moment forward you be the trying to avoid my attacks, said Sasuke. As Sasuke's and Haku's weapons clash again Sasuke had another kunai which he throw at Haku's head however Haku managed to duck it but Sasuke then kick Haku in the face and send flying back towards Zabuza. That's not possible nobody's faster than Haku, Zabuza thought in shock. You thought you were fast than me as if let's see what else I'm better than you were at, Sasuke said proudly. You made a big mistake underestimate these genin you brought out Sasuke determination to prove you wrong he's one of the most skilled young fighter back at the hidden leaf and is this year rocky of the year. Sakura here is one of the most brightest in her class and last but not least is Sai Shimura who has been trained at early age by his grandfather Danzo Shimura the shinobi of darkness, said Kakashi. Ha ha Haku if we keep going like this we will be the ones in trouble so stop messing around and finish it already, said Zabuza. Right, said Haku as he started to release his chakra into the air. What is he planning, thought Sasuke. I am sorry it has come to this, said Haku as he started doing hand signs. The air is getting colder, said Sasuke. Ice style, secret jutsu, crystal ice mirror, said Haku. Suddenly ice started form behind Sasuke and then more started to form around him making 12 ice mirrors hovering above the ground then 8 more form hovering above the first 12 and finally one ice mirror formed facing downwards. What is that jutsu how does it work, Kakashi said out loud. Haku then walked next one of the ice mirror and he walked inside of it and then his reflection appeared in all the mirrors. What kind of technique is this, thought Sasuke. I got to help him. Kakashi thought as ran towards where Sasuke was but stopped by Zabuza. If you enter this fight you got to fight me first your boy there he's got no change against that Judas he's finish, said Zabuza. Now I will show you what speed is truly is, said Haku as he readly his senbons. I just I should act as well, Naruto thought to himself as he lift up his right hand and a light appreted his hand and when it cleared revealed Naruto was now holding one of his swords. The sword itself was a pitch black sword with trims of grey, it has a black hilt connected to a handguard that drops down on the right sword and attached to this elongated area of the handguard as part of the sword. It's Kirito Sword, Elucidator, from Sword Art Online. As Naruto changed at Team 7 Sai got his Tonto blade and changed and met with Naruto with both of their blades clashed. With Naruto and Sai as Naruto and Sai both each other with their blades and people who were close could hear the sound of the metals clashing. Sai grated a scroll and a paintbrush from his back then he brought it in front of him and then he quick drawn a tiger and said, Super Beast Scroll? Once his brush left the scroll the drawing came to live and leap of the page and grew live size then it attacked Naruto. Naruto saw the drawn tiger coming at him so he did a couple of hand signs and said, Lave style. Lave bullets jutsu. He let out a couple of little water bullets which hit Sai's drawn tiger and cause it to dispel. Interesting jutsu you got there, said Naruto. Thank you, said Sai. If I'm able to capture him and bring him back to Konoha with his grandfather would be pleased that we can some intel about this legion organization like where is its headquarters, thought Sai. As Sai was thinking Naruto this is his chance and began did a single hand side then said, water style. Water torrent bullet. As he finished the misty air below Sai form into water and became a powerful vortex of water around Sai then Naruto swing his arms send Sai flying upwards in the air and as he fell to the ground Naruto had vanished then reappear and kick him in midair and send he flying again but towards the others. 
As Sai clashed to the ground on his right side hitting his right arm and his right half of his ribcage he thought, Dame it how could I get distracted, and as he tried to get up he felt an incredible amount of pain. Arrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Having a bloodlines doesn't automatically make you stronger they just give you advices over your opponent unless your opponent have the same bloodline as you then it comes down to who has mastered it better than who, said Haku. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
to cut Zabuza's right hand and as he did Kakashi then got away from Zabuza while Zabuza used it as an opportunity to disappear into the mist then Kakashi used the kanai that he didn't just use to cut Zabuza's hand but instead he used the kanai to cut his own thumb and after he put the kuani away and then bought out a scroll which he then opened and ripped his blood across it before resealing it and he began doing a couple of hand signs and once he finished he slammed the scroll on the ground. Summoning Jutsu. Earth style. Tracking Fang Jutsu said Kakashi as he did marking appeared on the ground around it. Suddenly the ground around Zabuza burst open and from it came eight hounds which were all different breeds and they were wearing blue vest and had Konoha headbands around their necks and all of them bit Zabuza's shoulder, arms and his legs. He used my own blood to find in this mist, thought Zabuza. This fight of ours is over Zabuza, said Kakashi as he started to channel a large amount of chakra into his left hand which became visible to everyone to see then Kakashi change it making it into lightning which sounded like many chipping birds. What is that, thought Zabuza. It's over Zabuza, Chidori, said Kakashi before he charged at Zabuza's chest. However just before Kakashi was about to finish Zabuza the lightning from Kakashi's Chidori suddenly pull away from Zabuza's chest which saved Zabuza's life and then someone came flying past him and clash against the ground Kakashi turned to look at who it was and he was shocked. Sai. Kakashi shouted shock everyone else because Sai was a strong member of the foundation being trained by his grandfather at early age so seeing beat was shocking. So who's next? said Naruto as he walks towards them. What happened with Naruto and Sai as Naruto ran at Sai he channels chakra though his foot and kick Sai's chest but instead of send Sai flying he just burst into a puddle of ink. He can make clones out of ink, Naruto thought as he looks around for Sai. He's way stronger than I thought I don't think I will be strong enough to bring him back to Konoha. Sai thought as was hidden behind some metal equipment. As Sai was trying to come up a plan to deal with Naruto he didn't notice that Naruto had found him thanks to his sensor skill and he got one of his jutsus ready and aiming at Sai. Sai then look over to see what Naruto was doing and saw that he was looking straight at him. Crap. Sai thought as he was about to jump away. Energy style. Blast wave. Naruto said as he held out his arms and fire a large ball of energy at Sai who just managed to avoid it in time as it would had kill him as it had destroy everything it had touched. He said thunder style I never of that style before. Sai thought as he looked at the destruction it had caused. Perhaps it's a new bloodline. Sai thought. If he's able to do something like that then he has just been toying with me the whole time. Sai thought. Naruto thought it was time to get serious so he vanished using his true speed and reappeared in front of Sai which surprised him and then Naruto punch him in the chest which sent flying backwards but Naruto disappear and reappear where Sai was heading and kick which sent flying again Naruto did this again and again and again until he kicked Sai in the head towards the newcomer. Now with Naruto and Kakashi. Look kid just stand down I don't want to kill you, said Kakashi. Oh you think you could take me down with so little effort do you? said Naruto. I will do whatever it takes to help this land unlike you, said Kakashi. Do you want to why I came here Leaf Ninja, said Naruto. Then why are you here, Kakashi asked curiously. I'm here to help the land of waves as well, Naruto answered. Wait seriously, Tazuna said surprised. Yes indeed but right I have something that needs my full attention, said Naruto. Suddenly everyone heard clapping from one side of the bridge as they turn around to see who it was they saw Gato standing there with many of his trugs. Gato what are you doing then? said Zabuza. I came here to finish some loose ends like you, said Gato. What do you mean about that? said Zabuza. I have decided that you and your partner are no longer any use to my plans anymore so I am getting rid of you the fun away, said Gato. Gato then turn around to look at his men. Finish them all off and destroy once and for good and you all will be pay exeter, Gato announced which then got cheers. Many of Gato's thugs who had crossbows all lined up and they aim at Kakashi and Zabuza and but as they fired them instead of hitting their target the ice wall which was formed just in time. Haku since when can you create something that fast, Zabuza asked. It wasn't me Zabuza san, said Haku surprising both Zabuza and Kakazi. Then who made it? Zabuza asked curiously. Him, Haku said whilst pointing at Naruto. If you don't mind I'll handle this, Naruto said walking towards Gato and his men. Ha ha you think a child can beat all of us, said one of the thugs. I'm not going to beat all of you, 
said Naruto. Then what are you going to do then kid? said the same thugs from before. I'm going to kill every single one of you, said Naruto before he extends his right arm and fires a small, thin, very fast and concentrated a golden laser like beams from his index finger, which barrels down and pierces through many of the trug's chest. Why you little bastard, another trug shoot it as he changed at Naruto with a spear and he was aiming for Naruto's chest but as he was about to reach him Naruto simply threw a punch at the trugs which then produced a miniature fireball which burned the trugs alive. Don't just stand there kill him, Gato shouted. B but he just kill most of us already, said one of the thugs. If you kill him I will pay you all ten times of what I promise, Gato shouted. Screw you and your money I'm getting out of here, said another thug before ran towards one of sides of the bridge to escape but as he ran away he was slit in half by one of Naruto's energy beams. I said I was going to kill all of you and that is what I am going to do, Naruto said in a serious tone. Energy style. God splied cut, Naruto said as he creates a field of yellow energy around his right hand creating a blade then he swiped his hand unleashed to energy slashes killing the remaining trugs and afterwards Naruto started to walk towards Gato. P please don't kill me I'll pay you anything you want I'll even leave this place for good, Gato beg on his knees. No I'm not going to kill Gato I'm giving that to the people you have wrong, said Naruto. Just then Log, Chino and Noaki all arrived on the bridge. Chino eyes glowed red allowing Gato to remember his little meeting with having place a genjutsu over Gato making him forget. You there I remember you lot, you force me to sign over everything I have to you, said Gato. That's right nightly night Gato, Naruto said before he punched Gato straight in the face knocking him out. So this is the power of Zarif Otsutsuki, thought Kakashi. Holy shit. Zabuza said didn't expect all that. If he had went serious against me I would die no doubt about it, Sai thought. What kind of monster is he, Sakura said terrified. That power I should have it not some mask nobody, thought Sasuke. I just hope he doesn't turn me and Zabuza san, thought Haku. Kakashi any ideas what just happened? Zabuza asked. No clue. Kakashi answered but still curious. You I remember you. You force me to sign over everything I have to you, said Gato. That's right nightly night Gato, Naruto said before he punched Gato straight in the face knocking him out. So this is the power that Zarif Otsutsuki has it's no wonder why many people are looking for him, thought Kakashi. Holy shit. Zabuza said didn't expect all that. If he had went serious against me I would have died no doubt about it, thought Mito. What kind of monster is he, Sakura said terrified. That power I should have T not some mask nobody, thought Sasuke. I just hope he doesn't turn me and Zabuza san, thought Haku. Kakashi any ideas what just happened? Zabuza asked. No clue. Kakashi answered but still curious, current time and now. Naruto then turned around and faced the others. Now then Tazuna I need to discuss something with you privacy, said Naruto. Wait just there do you honestly think that we will allow you to talk to Tazuna alone I don't think so, said Kakashi. If I wanted Tazuna dead I would have done it already and besides your opinion doesn't matter here, said Naruto before lifting his right arm. Universal pull. Naruto said and suddenly an invisible force pulled Tazuna towards Naruto and it was so fast no one could stop him. Tazuna. Kakashi shouted in worry for Tazuna's life. I said speak to Tazuna privacy, Naruto said before he clicked his fingers and then a seal appeared around him and Tazuna then a pitch black dome appeared around them preventing everyone else seeing them. What the hell is that, thought everyone else, inside the dome. Now then we can have a discussion, said Naruto. What do you want from me? Tazuna said scared. Nothing bad I ensure you I just want to talk about forming allies between our lands, said Naruto. You want to forming allies with us, said Tazuna. Yes I do I come from the land of the whirlpool, said Naruto. I thought that the land of the whirlpool was destroyed years ago, said Tazuna. It was before I went and restored it, said Naruto. You restored the land of whirlpool but you're so young, said Tazuna. You really shouldn't underestimated someone just because of your ago so what do you say to my deal, said Naruto. If I agree to this will you help my village in return, said Tazuna. Yes of course I will I would return all of the money that Gato stole from you, 
Rebuild or build new homes for your people as well as give them food and medical supplies. Protection from anyone else who wishes to take over your village like what Gado did and before coming here I force Gado to sign over his company to me so I also give your people jobs where unlike Gado I will pay, said Naruto. That does sound better what Konoha has to offer, thought Tazuna. And what Exceli do you want in return, Tazuna asked. As you know the land of waves has one of the best control over the seas in the trading industry which is one of the reason why Gato took control over your land so forming alliance with you will benefit Yuzuo Shiogakure greatly as well, said Naruto. You're right if everything you saying is indeed true alliance with your land would benefit both of us but I can't make that decision myself I would need to inform the rest of my village about this, said Tazuna. Very well as you do that I'll inform my village about this and have them ready the food and medical if you chose to join. Naruto said before he clinking his fingers and the pitch black dome around Naruto and Tazuna shattered. Tazuna. Father. Grandpa. E everyone, Tazuna said shocked by seeing his daughter, grandson and the rest of his village. Well it seems that your village came to help out after all how nice of them anyways I'll be back in a couple days for your decision however I would be grateful if you don't tell the Konoha team about this discussion of ours, Naruto said before disappeared. Hey that mask guy is gone. Sakura shouted. Damn it, I hope to get a little more intel about the Legion organization from him, thought Kakashi. Zabuza san, Haku said as he appeared next to Zabuza and then he took Zabuza away. They're gone as well, said Kakashi, a couple days later. So, Tazuna, have you come to a decision, said Naruto. Yes, we have and we agree to your terms, said Tazuna. Good then let's first return what Gato stole from you his Naruto then clicked his finders and several black hooded people appeared holding ninja scroll. It's Naruto's puppets just without the Uzushiogakure symbol so Konoha won't find out just yet. Who are these people? said Tazuna. They are my shinobis, said Naruto. Naruto's shinobi then unsealed the scrolls to revel bags of money, food and medical supplies. It was helpful that Gato kept a book fill with intel about money he took from you so we know Exceli how much Gato owns you, said Naruto. Naruto's shinobi went ahead and gave the people of the land of the waves their money back, food, medical and building supplies. You just tell me where you want new buildings and I'll create them, said Naruto. Yes thank you so much but please excuse me I need to fully pay the Konoha team for the mission, said Tazuna. Why in the hell are I wearing this? said one of the two hooded people behind who were in fact Zabuza and Haku. We can't allow Konoha to know that you have joined up with me and with those rings I gave you too they will hide your charkas, said Naruto. So now that you're in change of Gato's company are you going to change the name, said Haku. Yes I am and I was thinking about calling it the Alvarez Trading Company, said Naruto. At Konoha after one hour all of the members of the Konoha team were presented in front of there was all the members of the Konoha council sitting down by a large wooden U shape table who were the clan heads of all the clans within Konoha the Hyuga. Aburame, Inazuka, Serutobi, Nara, Akamichi, Yamanaka, Shimura and Kurama though there were empty seats Uzumaki, Senju and Uchiha. Next was the high-ranking shinobi commanders, then there were civilians side of the council which were all the most wealthiest merchants within Konoha and finally the three elders who were all students of the former second Hokage Tobarama Senju and in the middle of all of them was the third Hokage. Hiyashi Hayuga he has long brown hair and featureless white eyes like all members of his clan. He normally wears very traditional, loose fitting robes with a long sleeved, brown haori. Shibi Aburame, like all members of his clan, has his eyes obscured by dark glasses which feature a single tassel hanging down from one side. He has very spiky short black hair and a mustache. He typically wears a high collared outfit, while carrying a gourd on his back. Sume has an animalistic look similar to that of her son Kiba. She has long, spiky, untamed brown hair, vertical slit like pupils, elongated canine teeth and nails. She also has the clan fang markings on her cheeks as well as markings over her eyes and a dark shade of purple lipstick. She wears the standard outfit of a Konoha shinobi consisting of flak jacket and a black suit underneath with the sleeves rolled up and bandages around her legs. Shikaku Nara has two scars on the right side of his face which were probably his most noticeable feature. Like his son, he had dark hair tied up into a spiky ponytail, dark eyes as well as a goatee. His ears were also pierced. 
he was wearing the standard Konoha Shinobi outfit and Shikaku's flak jacket is depicted as a deeper shade of green. Shoza Akamichi A is a tall, plump man with long, spiky red hair and purple markings on his cheeks, with the latter being a common trait in the Akamichi clan. He wears a samurai-like outfit which entails a black suit completed with armor that has the kanji for food, she, shoku, on it. He also wears a rope belt, handguards, and instead of a forehead protector, a hachimaki tied around his head. Inoichi Yamanaka has long ash blonde hair reaching into his back, which he wore spiky on top and ending in a long ponytail, blue-green eyes and strong facial features, which included a well-defined jawline, he wore the standard outfit of the Konoha interrogation unit, complete with a long black overcoat. Hair is pulled back in a twin bun locked by a traditional Japanese hairpin, the pearls on her hair needle have also increased and tassels were added to the other end. Her earrings are also considerably longer. As a member of the Konoha council, Kaharu wears a simple long kimono, closed by an obi, a jacket, and a sash over it. Kaharu has also taken to squinting, barely opening her eyes at any point in time. Homura is depicted with gray hair, a beard, glasses as well as a constant frown that he's always worn, even in his youth. He also has a strong jawline a facial structure he has retained even in his old age. As a member of the Konoha Council, he wears haori with a blue, full-length kimono that is tied using a white sash. Danzo appeared as a frail, old man, who would normally walk with a cane. He had black, shaggy hair, and his right eye was bandages. Danzo has had an X-shaped scar on his chin ever since his youth. He wore a white shirt, with a black or dark gray robe over the top of it covering from his feet, to just over his right shoulder. The robe conceals his right arm which was bandaged, and covered with three large golden braces. Now then as everyone who was a part of your team is here we will let you to tell us what exactly happened in the land of waves, said Hiruzen. Yes Hokage-san, said Kakashi. I'm not going to write Kakashi's description of the battle you know what from the previous chapters. As Kakashi finished his report about the battle during the land of waves the entire council was shocked when Kakashi told them about Legion showing up and they really wanted to know how Zerif possessed multiple bloodlines. I thought that if we managed to capture him we could convince him to join Konohagakure or get any intel on the Legion organization, said Kakashi. I agree it would have been useful get him to join Konoha as well as get some intel on this Legion organization like where is their base of operations, said Danzo. If my route managed to capture him Konoha will possess all those bloodlines, thought Danzo. I wonder why the Land of Waves didn't want to form an alliance with us with everything that they've been though you would think they would be jump at the chance, said Choza. I agree it is strange, said Shibi. Kakashi do you have any idea what this Zerif discussed with the Tazuna, here is an ask. No nothing the dome that Zerif created prevented us from seeing or hearing their meeting and afterwards Tazuna wouldn't tell us anything, said Kakashi. Kakashi do you know what happened to Zabuza and that Yuki clan member, Hiaishi? I don't know after the battle they disappeared, said Kakashi. I are going to need to keep a close eye on Legion they could become possible allies or enemies in the future, thought Hiruzen. At Azukage mansion Naruto sat in his Azukage throne without his mask on and stood in front of him was Shishi who had short, unkempt, dark-colored hair, black eyes and a relatively broad nose and well-defined eyelashes, that were turns upwards at each end, he wears a black high-collared shirt, a midriff exposing flak jacket, and light blue pants. Most of this goes unseen, as he wears a tattered light brown poncho over it. He wraps bandages around his ankles and a blue sash around his head during this appearance. Yes, he's wearing what Sasuke wore during Naruto, the last, because if I go that far again Sasuke won't be wearing that so instead for it going to waste. So Shisui what have you learned in Suna? Naruto asked curiosity. They are planning to turn on Konoha and work with Orochimaru the rogue Sanin to destroy, said Shisui. Really that is indeed interesting but only problem I see in that for us is if someone like Orochimaru to gain Konoha bloodlines and secrets it would be bad for everyone said Naruto. They are planning to do this during the Chunin exams finials which is going to be held in Konoha this year, said Shisui. I see however knowing Orochimaru he will send someone or go himself to obtain any bloodlines, said Naruto. Indeed he has made it clear to Suna that he wants Sasuke alive most likely to possess his body and obtain his Sharingan, said Shishi. 
The Sharingan in the hands someone like Orochimaru is too dangerous to ignore, said Naruto. What are you planning to do Excelli Naruto-san? Shishi asked curiosity. To prevent Orochimaru from gaining the Sharingan I'll go to Konoha to take part of the Chunin exams it's a perfect chance to show the world that Yuzwoshio is back and better than ever, said Naruto. Won't the other villages attack us once they learn of us, said Shisui. They may try but they will fail thanks to the barrier jutsu I have over the land, said Naruto. Didn't the old Uzushiogakure had a barrier but failed during the attack, said Shisui. Yes you are correct somehow Hoshigakure, Kusagakure, Takigakure and unknown force found a way to undo the barrier jutsu I don't know they did it by themselves maybe or perhaps someone gave the blueprints of it to them but it won't happen to us, said Naruto. Why's that Naruto-san? Shishi asked curiosity, because I have improved it greatly and there isn't any blueprints for it, said Naruto. I see and who Excelli will be bringing with you, Shisui asked curiosity. Yoda I'm sure he'll want to see Konoha and the friends that he made there again and log if the chance for he maybe to see Tsunade, said Naruto. I see but you will need someone to be call your sensei, said Shisui. Already thought of it Konoha will no doubt be keeping an eye on me so I will bring in Seba's Tien with this which will make Konoha think that the reason why I am so strong is because I have been trained by him, said Naruto. I see it dose makes sense and will you be revealing who you truly are to them as well, said Shisui. No I won't, said Naruto, not if I help it, thought Naruto. The council chambers the council room was busy with activity as the heads of the All Leafs major clans along with members of several civilians council, as well as the Anbu commander were present there. They all had gathered there for the special emergency council meeting. Although, the strange thing was that none of them knew what the emergency was. After a little while, once everyone settled into their seats in the council room, the third Hokage entered the room. Thank you all for coming so quickly, said Hiruzen, once all the Jonin senseis had gathered. Now as some of you may or may not know the Chunin exam are about to take place shortly. Upon hearing this, there was a large amount of muttering in the hall as many of them surprised that it was time for the Chunin exam already. Fortunately though, after a minute or two, things settled down again where the Hokage then continued to speak. So I would like to hear any recommendations from those of you who believe that their team is ready to compete in the exam, said Hiruzen. I, Kakashi Hitaki, Jonin Sensei of Team 7 nominate Sai Shimura and Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno for the exams, said Kakashi. I, Kurenai Yuhi, Jonin Sensei of Team 8 nominate Kiba Inazuka, Hanada Hayuga and Shino Aburame for the exams, said Kurenai said. I, made a guy, Jonin Sensei of Team 9 nominate Neji Hayuga, Rock Lee and Tenten Higurashi for the exams, said Guy in a serious tone that surprised everyone that expected him to start shouting. I, Asuma Serutobi, Jonin Sensei of Team 10 nominate Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka and Choji Akamichi for the exams, Asuma finished and everyone started whispering about all the rookies being nominated. As everyone was talking amongst themselves Aruka, who was currently sitting next to the Hokage, decided to voice his concerns about the rookie Genin's teams entering the Chunin exam. Excuse me Hokage-sama, but are you sure that it's wise to have three rookie Genin teams, who only just graduated from the academy less than six months ago? said Aruka. If you really feel that they aren't ready, why don't you test them for yourself? Kakashi said, his eye not wavering in the slightest. If Aruka had gained their attention before, Kakashi had just put them all on the edge, there was no protest for the Chunin exams before. Just the Junin sensei's approval and a minimum required mission count of 8. They had heard people object to the Junin's decisions before, but they had never seen a Junin push back. Hushed whispers carried through the room, most being bets of who would likely win the debate. Aruka paled slightly, but was intrigued by Kakashi's challenge, what exactly do you mean by that? Kakashi grimaced, but he explained what he was thinking without hesitation, it's actually pretty straightforward, you think up a test of a shinobi skill that you remember them either excelling or failing at that. If they pass then you will allow them to continue on to the chunin exams. If they fail your test then they won't be allowed to enter. The murmuring increased, most of them now thoroughly confused. Uruka, however, understood what Kakashi was getting at. I see, so you want me to prove that they are ready to take the exams. He scowled as he looked at Kakashi. 
What if I give them a test that I know that they'll fail at? No you won't Aruka if they think their genins are ready then they're ready so deal with it, said Hiruzen. Yes Hokage-san, said Aruka. Just then a chunin appeared in the room holding a scroll. Hokage-san we have a late entirely for the chunin exams, said the chunin. Okay so treat it like the rest and add them to the list, said Hiruzen. But it's who it is from you should see, said the chunin. All right bring it here, said Hiruzen. As the chunin handed Hiruzen the scroll and after he read it his eyes open up in shock. Lord third what's wrong what does it say, Kakashi asked curiosity. I don't believe it but it says that it's from the legion organization and they will be sending a team to enter the chunin exams, Hiruzen said in shock. What? They all shouted in shock, just then a chunin appeared in the room holding a scroll. Hokage-san we have a late entirely for the chunin exams, said the chunin. Okay so treat it like the rest and add them to the list, said Hiruzen. But it's who it is from you should see, said the chunin. All right bring it here, said Hiruzen. As the chunin handed Hiruzen the scroll and after he read it his eyes open up in shock. Lord third what's wrong what does it say, Kakashi asked curiosity. I don't believe but it says that it's from the night raid organization and a single member will be entering the chunin exams, Hiruzen said in shock. What? They all shouted in shock, now at the current time. One month later at Konoha's east gate the best friends Azumo and Katetsu were doing the worst job any leaf shinobi could do and that was village gate guard duty. This SSS Suokus, Katetsu moaned while sitting beside his best friend Azumo whose eye was twitching in annoyance. They both got sick of watching nothing so they both decided to play a game of cards. Oh will you give it a rest? yelled Azumo. He might not like guard duty as much as his friend but at least he wasn't going to bitch about it. But Azumo nobody comes here unless they are for the chunin exams and that's starting tomorrow. Nobody is gonna come here so late. Sighing at his friend's childishness he looked at the cards he had in his hand and placed them on the table. Well you best keep your wits up because you never know if there's gonna be an enemy attack, told Azumo. Yeah whatever, muttered Katetsu while placing down one of his cards. Azumo noticed how his friend's eyes suddenly darted towards the dirt road and followed his gaze and he saw four shadowed figures walking down the road towards them. Looks like there are some applicants after all, smirked Azumo seeing his friend grunt but both kept their guards up just in case that they were enemies. With Naruto Naruto under his Zerif Atsusuki identify was walking towards Konoha by himself however he wasn't happy about it as he had to see Konohagakure again after 5 years since he last saw it before he ran away 5 years ago. Yoda has green eyes and spiky brown hair tied in a ponytail, he was wearing a sleeveless brown coat and black long sleeved shirt underneath it and carried a medium length shikuto blade on his back, he wore a pairing of black gloves on his hands and wore his forehead protector around his waist along with a long sash and he had his Uzushiogakure forehead around his neck and with blue cloth. He also wore a simple blue shinobi pants and a pair of black shinobi sandals. He's wearing what Masuki wears, it's been a while since I last been to Konoha it hasn't changed much, said Seba's Tien. Yeah it's still the same, said Yoda. And I bet the people are still the same, said Naruto. As Naruto and his team continued to walk until they were standing in front of the booth which Azumo and Katetsu were standing in. May I help you? asked Azumo looking at the team in front of him. Yes you can I am here for the chunin exams we're from the legion organization, said Seba's Tien. Both Azumo and Katetsu eyes widened at that information as they had been given a report from the third Hokage which they have read a couple of days ago about a team from the new legion organization will be entering the exams this year. Oh yes. Welcome to the Hidden Leaf Village. We're glad that you were able to come. If you wouldn't mind I would like you to tell me your names so I can write them down in our registration log," said Katetsu holding a pen and clipboard up. My name is Sebas Tien, said Sebas Tien which shocked them. That's the Sebas Tien, thought Azumo. He's the god of death, thought Katetsu. My name is Log Senmaki, said Log. Ichi has the eyes of a predator thought Azumo who was hoping that he was just imagining things. My name is Zerif Atsusuki, said Naruto. This is the person that the Hokage told us to keep an eye out for, thought Katetsu. Well then welcome to Konohagakure, said Azumo. 
As Naruto and his team walked the gates and into the village they saw several shinobi from other countries walking around and doing their own thing. Naruto also noted how some people would looking at his team strangely. They treat anyone who isn't allies with Konoha like this it's no wonder Konoha has so many enemies, thought Naruto. Naruto also knew that he has been watched by a couple of Konoha Anbu Black Ops members as Naruto is able sense them hiding in the shadows of the alleyways and rooftops. Those gatekeepers must have informed the Hokage about our arrival, thought Naruto. Okay I'll book us in the hotel where all the shinobi from other villages will be staying as well you may do as you please until then, Sebas said before he walked towards the hotel. I'll go to the bookstore and see anything interesting there, said Log. I'll getting something to eat, said Yoda. I'll just go for a wander around then, thought Naruto. As Naruto made his way he walked through an alley and was looking around the area while remembering his life in the village. The glares, the neglect, the beatings, he remembers it all and it all started with the village. If it wasn't because Kuruma attacked the village or the masked man who claimed to be Madara Uchiha and it wasn't even because of his father who had sealed Kuruma in his gut, it was the damned village. Their stupidity and fear has made Naruto's first seven years in this world a living hell. It was his first meeting with Kuruma that saved his life from damnation by the village and now he's gonna show the village what they missed out on. I regret nothing, thought Naruto smiling warmly his smile left his face quickly when Anbu wearing a bird mask appeared in front of him. Zarif Atsusuki you have been called for a meeting with the Hokage, said the Anbu. No I'm not going to have a meeting with that old cage of yours so make sure you tell him that and leave me alone, says Naruto walking past the Anbu. The Anbu quickly turned around to grab Naruto by his right shoulder and grips it tightly to try to show his superiorly over Naruto. I'm sorry but it wasn't a request, said the Anbu. And I'm no longer someone who will be controlled by the likes of you lot anymore, Naruto said whilst whispered the last part. Naruto remembers this certain Anbu who had once joined a mob beating instead of stopping it and now that Naruto is back he has a lot of debts that need to be paid and he's gonna collect one way or another. The Anbu then saw Naruto wave his right hand around and next minute he gasped in shock and fear when he suddenly couldn't breath which caused him to go of Naruto. You think just cause I'm young you have control over me, said Naruto. The Anbu Black Ops member try his best to be able to breath again but nothing he did work and then he notices Naruto's left hand was in hand seal. I'm not a shinobi of this village or even a civilian so you have no right to order me around, said Naruto. The Anbu Black Ops member then saw his air coming out from his mouth and form a dome around his head choking him. You're Lucy that I don't want to deal with Konoha for killing you, said Naruto. Naruto bended the air out of the Anbu Black Ops member just like what Zager did to the Earth Queen but Naruto allow the Anbu Black Ops member live. As the air dome around the Anbu Black Ops member vanished he collapsed and Naruto disappeared leaving the unconscious Anbu Black Ops member. Naruto was sitting on top of a building looking at his former he had to admit Konoha is beautiful sure he hates the people of Konoha but that doesn't change the fact and as he look over he heard something that caught his attention. Damn it, brat that hurt. The shinobi said and picked up the small child by his collar getting ready to apply some punishment. From what Naruto could see the two strange shinobis with sand hishiot. The one holding the kid wore a black, baggy, full body suit with a red and yellow circle on the front. He also wears a black hood which covered his head completely and had cat like ears and his forehead protector on his forehead. He also a bundle in his back with white bandages surrounding it completely. The other shinobi's outfit consists of a single light purple colored, off the shoulders garment that extended to halfway down her thighs, with a scarlet sash tied around her waist. In addition to incorporating fishnet worn over her shoulders and legs, specifically on her right calf and her left thigh, she also wore her black forehead protector around her neck. The boy who was being holed up by the Suna shinobi had short spiky brown hair and black eyes. He wore gray shorts and a yellow shirt with a red Konoha symbol printed on it and long blue scarf around his neck his name was Konohamaru Serutobi and he was the grandson of Hiruzen Serutobi. He had short brown hair and dark eyes. He had big circular glasses and wore a simple blue shirt which zipped up the middle, a pair of brown pants and sandals his name was Udon. She has orange hair tied up, with red elastics, into two very large pigtails. She was wears a red tank top over a pink t-shirt layered at the bottom. Her pants are gray and she wears the traditional ninja sandals her name was Moegi. I've got to teach him some respect, 
Tamari, Konkuro replied the female shinobi. Fine, fine but if you get in trouble I'm not helping, Tamari replied, and Konkuro nodded getting ready to smash his fist into Konohamaru. Sakura just watched scared of them. Suddenly a small pebble fly through the air out of the corner of his eye and hit Konkuro's wrist. After being hit, Konkuro almost immediately dropped Konohamaru, as he held his wrist in pain from being hit so suddenly and hard. When everyone looked to where the pebble came from, they saw Sasuke sitting up on the thick branch of a nearby tree. You're a long way from home and way out of your league, said Sasuke as he stared at Konkuro, who looked pissed at Sasuke stopping him. Sssaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
You're actually trying to take the Chunin exam at your level? mocked one of the genin. You kids should quiet while you still can, as you won't last in the exam, said the other genin. Please just let us through, spoke Tenten as she helped Lee back up and then tried to walk though, only to be pushed back by one of the two boys. Hey there no need to do that, spoke another genin in the waiting crowd. Huh. We're doing you all a favor by keeping from doing the exam, as it is extremely difficult and we've seen people get seriously injured in it, since they weren't ready for it, spoke one of the two boys who had two bandages on his cheeks. He's right, as a Chunin is a leader of the squad and it's his job to make sure that his subordinates come back alive from a mission, so what's wrong with weeding out the weaklings, as they aren't going to pass anyway if they can't get by us? said the other boy. That's a pretty sound argument, but I'll pass, spoke Sasuke as he stepped forward, also undo this field that you created by using Genjutsu, as I want to go to the third floor where the exam is being held. That idiot the Genjutsu was supposed to get rid of weak people who are fools to fall for it, Naruto thought. At hearing this many people in the crowd grew confused, not understanding what Sasuke was talking about. Oh so you notice? spoke the boy with the bandages on his face. Yeah, you guys also noticed earlier, said Sasuke where he looked back at Sai and Sakura, as both of you have the best analyzing skills and genjutsu know-how on our squad. Hell yeah Sasuke-kun praised my skills, Sakura thought happily. You're pretty good, but just being able to detect isn't enough, spoke the boy with the bandages on his face, he quickly flipped forward to kick Sasuke, who saw it coming and prepared to block the kick with a kick of his own. But just as the two were about to hit each other Lee suddenly appeared between them and caught both their legs. He's fast, Naruto thought as he looked at green clothing Genin. He's a completely different person, that he was a moment ago, he must have been only letting those guys push him around so to keep his real skill level from everyone else so they would underestimate him clever, thought Naruto. He stopped me with just a kick, thought Sasuke with some surprise and annoyance at how easily this stranger had caught his kick. Soon after Lee let go of both Sasuke and the other boy, where when he did, his teammates walked up to him. Lee you broke our promise Lee, said the newcomer who had fair skin, long brown hair and featureless white eyes, he wore a beige colored shirt, a dull blue shirt beneath that, and mesh armor beneath that. He wore dark brown shorts, blue shinobi sandals, and wrapped bandages around his right arm, chest, and right leg. He tied his hair back in a loose ponytail tied a few inches above the end. He wore a black forehead protector, under which was a smaller headband with two straps that framed the sides of his face his name was Neji of the Hyuga clan. When Neji and Tenten came up to Lee, you're the one who didn't want to gain people's attention, by doing something to stand out, said the newcomer. I'm sorry, spoke Lee, where the then turned to look at Sakura and blush a little. Upon seeing this brown hair guy Jusk scoffed as he figured Lee had done what he did to impress Sakura. After being scolded by his teammate, Lee then walked up to Sakura, my name is Rock Lee, let's go out together, I'll protect you till the day I die, spoke Lee, where he then did his nice guy pose. Sakura stared at him for a moment before she spoke, no, way, you're lame, she deadpanned that caused Lee slumped in depression. Sakura was quick to speak. The boy was lame his jumpsuit, hair and everything about just seemed wrong. E.H., no, she said. I belong to Sasuke-kun, she thought to herself. Hey, you, the brown hair boy said facing Sasuke, what's your name? Sasuke looked at the boy and scoffed. If you want to learn someone's name, you should give your own first. Neji just frowned. You're a rookie right? He asked, not leaving any time to answer his question he continued. How old are you? Sasuke scoffed again. I don't have to answer you, he said. Sasuke and the Hyuga turned from each other and began to walk away. As Naruto finished watching the scene unfold he then turned around and continued to make his way to exam hall with his teammates. After being scolded by his teammate, Lee then walked up to Sakura, my name is Rock Lee, let's go out together, I'll protect you till the day I die, spoke Lee, where he then did his nice guy pose. Sakura stared at him for a moment before she spoke, no, way, you're lame, she deadpanned that caused Lee slumped in depression. Sakura was quick to speak, the boy was lame his jumpsuit, hair and everything about just seemed wrong. E.H., no, she said. I belong to Sasuke-kun, she thought to herself. 
Hey, you. The brown hair boy said facing Sasuke, what's your name? Sasuke looked at the boy and scoffed. If you want to learn someone's name, you should give your own first. Neji just frowned. You're a rookie right? He asked, not leaving any time to answer his question he continued. How old are you? Sasuke scoffed again. I don't have to answer you, he said. Sasuke and the Hyuga turned from each other and began to walk away. As Naruto finished watching the scene unfold he then turned around and continued to make his way to exam hall with his teammates. Now at the current time when Naruto's team entered the exam room, almost every single genins turned toward them and began glaring at them. Many of the genins teams, who were older than they were by several years, began leaking killing intent at the trio try intimate them but it didn't work as Yato and Log were actually trained by Seba's TN whilst Naruto didn't need it so he unleashed Abbott of his own killing instinct which scare most of them Naruto's team made their way towards a wall and waited there until the exams being. Suddenly they a loud squeal erupted toward the Chunin exam hall door. Sasuke-kun, I missed you so much, a girl said as she jumped on top of Sasuke, wrapping her arms around his neck and her legs around his waist. Did you miss me too? The girl has has fair skin, blue eyes and long platinum blonde hair worn in a ponytail, with bangs framing the right side of her face. Her hair is seen in different lengths. Her ponytail extends to her waist but it is later cut and grows to shoulder length. She wore a purple outfit consisting of a high collared blouse and matching apron skirt. She also wore an attire with bandages on her abdomen and legs, small hoop earrings, her forehead protector worn as a belt, and for a time, white arm warmers. Several tick marks appeared on Sakura's forehead. Get the hell off him, Eno Pig, she shouted. Troublesome women. A guy muttered as he and another guy made their way towards the group. He has narrow brown eyes and a typical expression suggesting he is either bored or irritated. He has shoulder length black hair tied in a spiky ponytail. He wears a short sleeved gray jacket with green edged sleeves and the rudimentary Nara clan symbol on the back, under which is a green lined mesh t shirt. He also wears brown pants, a pair of his clan's traditional silver hoop earrings, and wears his blue forehead protector around his left arm his name is Shikamaru of the Nara clan. The other guy has a rotund build and markings on his cheeks in the form of swirls. He has spiky, brown hair that sticks upward, he wears a green, short-sleeved haori with a long, white scarf over a light green shirt, with the kanji for, food, on it. He also wore black shorts, hoop earrings and bandages around his legs and forearms. His blue forehead protector was styled in a manner that allowed two tufts of hair to poke out at each side his name was Choji of the Akamichi clan. Don't tell me that you guys are also going to take this troublesome exam, too? Asked an annoyed Shikamaru, as he and Choji walked up to their teammate and former classmates. Hasa you guys are all doing the exam as well, spoke a new voice, where when everyone looked they saw two guys and one girl walking towards them. The boy in the middle had has messy brown hair, sharp black eyes with vertical slit-like pupils, pronounced canine teeth, and nails that he can change into claws. He also has the distinctive red fang markings on his cheeks. He wore a dark grayish pants reaching to his calves and a gray, hooded fur-lined coat, with the hood usually placed on his head, over an apparent plate of armor and fishnet undershirt and a blue forehead protector and blue sandals his name was Kiba of the Inazuka clan. On top of Kiba's head was a dog which was a small puppy with white fur, his eyes are squinted, appearing closed, and he has a brown nose, as well as brown patches on his ears and a brown outline around his mouth. His fur on top of his head is styled to somewhat resemble a mohawk his name was Akamaru. The other boy had dark sunglasses and a sea green jacket with a high, upturned collar, he had a fair skinned, dark, bushy brown hair and dark narrow eyes his name was Shino of the Aburame clan. The girl of the group had white eyes and dark blue hair that she keeps in a short, kept just above her forehead with chin length strands framing her face. She wears a cream colored hooded jacket with a fire symbol on the upper sleeves and fur around the cuffs and hem. Along with this, she wears navy blue pants and keeps her forehead protector around her neck. Her name was Hanada of the Hyuga clan. Are you doing the exam as well? asked Shikamaru in his usual bored tone. The rookie nine of the hidden leaf, Kiba said excitedly explaining himself quickly at seeing the confused looks. The first times in years since rookies have attended the Chunin exams and we are the ones to do it. Who boy? This is going one hell of a showdown. Hanada put a hand on his shoulder to calm him down. You sure seem confident Kiba, 
Sasuke said he had finally divested Ino from his back. Kiba scoffed. We did a lot of training. We won't lose to the likes of you, he said with bursting confidence. As Naruto watched the Konoha Genin among themselves he couldn't help but think that if he had stay in Konoha he would have known them just then Naruto saw a sliver-haired older Genin Genin walk towards the large group of Genin. The guy had small black eyes with round circular glasses on his nose, he wore a dark purple shirt with a white undershirt and a white obi around his waist worn at a slight angle, he also wore dark purple pants with a shuriken holster on his left hip. All of you be quiet, the silver-haired Genin stepped closer to the group drawing everyone else's attention you guys are rookies just from the academy right he asked as if he hadn't heard kiba's loud declaration screaming like schoolgirls this isn't a picnic who do you think you are kiba asks annoyed at the guy's obvious remarks my name is kabuto yakushi and you lot are being so noisy take a look around you he said kiba looked around him and gulped when he noticed that almost everyone inside was glaring at them have you already tried the exam? Sakura asked. Actually this is my seventh try, Kabuto explained sheepishly rubbing the back of his head. Man, you must be weak, Kiba said. These exams aren't easy, maybe I can share some information with you. Kabuto started and took deco cards from his pockets. These are my chakra cards, they react to my chakra signature and reveal the information that I have gathered. As you can see there are teams from all the countries. I can give you some information on anyone here, Kabuto concluded and it got Naruto got suspicious as how could Kabuto have gained information on shinobi from other villages. Is there anyone we should know about? Sasuke asked wanting to gain any intel about other shinobi teams. There's a couple actually like there is a team that isn't from a ninja village instead they come from that new legion organization and they are standing right over. Kabuto said poniting a Naruto's team. It's him again good I can test my power out on him and if he uses any jutsu then I'll copy it with my Sharingan, thought Sasuke. Their sensei is the legendary assassin Sebas Tien, said Kabuto. I had heard about him from grandfather he said that he's as strong as the third Hokage and he could have become the third god of shinobi instead if he hadn't threw down the offer, thought Sai. There is Log Senmaki, Yoda of the Kurosuke clan and Zarif Otsutsuki, said Kabuto. Next up is a team from Iwagakir who are the same age as you and they are over there, Kabuto said pointing at another team. The first one he noticed was the biggest of them who was easily the size of a middle-aged team and was quite chubby and could be considered a member of the Akamichi clan. He wore standard red Iwa clothing and his as for his feature he had a very large round nose that stuck out like a sore thumb. The other was the second male member had violet colored eyes and black hair. He wore similar outfit to his teammate but his Verizon was dark brown and was sleeveless. The last member and only female had dark hair that stopped a little below her chin and dark eyes, she wore something similar to her teammates but her left leg instead of a red pants leg was instead a mesh coat. Their sensei is a well-known shinobi Kitsuchi Kamazuru also known as Kitsuchi the Earth Titan because of his incredible skill over Earth-style jutsus and he's the son of the current Tsuchikage Onoki Kamazuru also known as Onoki the Fence Sit, said Kabuto. Yeah I'm giving Kitsuchi a nickname, Kuritsuchi of the Kamazuru clan the daughter of Kitsuchi making her the granddaughter of the current Tsuchikage Onoki Kamazuru next is Akatsuki Doji and finally Hojo of the Senryo clan and the grandson of the previous Tsuchikage Mew also known as the Null Man, said Kabuto. There's a team from Kumo they're a year older than you lot and as a all-boy team their sensei name is Motoi, said Kabuto. The first member was a boy who a HD dark-skinned man with a slightly bulbous nose, black eyes that look bored, and shaggy, white hair which covers his left eye, he wore a blue vest that was covered by a black sleeveless jumper that reveals he a black lightning seal which was on his left shoulder, he had his a dark blue forehead protector around his right arm, black fingerless gloves, grey pants, black boots, he carries a broad, foldable, cleaver-like sword, strapped to his back. He had a black forehead protector around his head, he wore a blue shirt that had long sleeves which he had rolled up above his wrists but still under his elbows, light grey trousers and dark blue shoes, he also was had a small holder strapped to his waist. He wore a white scarf around his neck, a grey t-shirt that had a versus neck, a dark navy blue jacket, golden bracelets around his wrists, he had his forehead protector as a belt buckle, he had black pants and black boots, he was also carrying a long sword on his back. 
The team members are Darui the son of the current Fouth Reikajai and the grandson of the previous third Reikaji, C and Atsui, said Kabuto. And that's just a few so is there anyone else you want to know about someone? Perhaps I have info about them, Kabuto offered. Sasuke was silent for a moment before he looked up, the red-haired ninja from Sand. Do you know his name? Kabuto asked. I think it was Gara, said Sasuke. Kabuto nodded and shuffled his nin cards. Found it, Sabaku no Gara, also known as Gara of the Sand. He has done many C rank missions and even some several B and A rank ones. His sensei is Baki the Windcutter, and his teammates are his older siblings Tamari and Konkuro. He told them. Rumors said that he didn't even have a scratch on him after doing his missions. That's one hell of interesting guy, if you ask me. Better stay away from him. Any others? Neji Hayuga, Rock Lee from the Leaf, and Sasuke looked at the, the pale red head from the corner of his eye. Zarif Otsutsuki from before. Neji Hayuga and Rock Lee are teammates under Maida Guy with another genin named Tenten. Lots of D rank missions, some C rank missions. Both of them excel in Taijutsu. Hayuga Neji comes from the Hayuga clan, branch member. Rock Lee is apprentice under his own Junin instructor, Maida Guy, the Taijutsu specialist. He has excellent taijutsu for a ninja his age, but according to rumors he is unable to use chakra in the form of ninjutsu or genjutsu. He took next card. And the last one is Zarif Otsutsuki I already told you who his teammates and sensei are, as for his skills it said that he's incredibly strong for someone his age and he's already made a name for himself and he's in the bingo book. Said Kabuto he then took out an orange book and found a page and he began to read from. Bingo book entry number 399 name. Zarif Otsutsuki, the elemental sage. Gender. Male eye color, purple hair color, pale red. Age. Around 13 years old. Ninja rank. Known village, none. Alliance. To the Legion organization threat level, high S rank. Warnings. Do not engage unless your rank is the same or higher. Known elemental affinities. All five weapons. He have been seen using all types of ninja weapons. Special abilities. High chakra capacity, enhanced strength, enhanced speed, knows many unique ninjutsu and very skill in taijutsu. Bloodline. He has been seen being able to use multiple bloodlines. Late style boil style ice style and unknown one or it could be unique style of jutsu. Other information. He has taken out many high ranking shinobi C to S rank. Upon Kabuto saying this, the entire room was so quiet that a person could hear a pin drop, where all eyes were on Naruto. How I'll have deal with some fools who doesn't believe what that guy said and want to make a name for themselves? Naruto thought annoyed. With one of the two teams from Kumogakure she had dark-skinned Kunoichi with long spiky red hair and amber eyes, wore a long short-sleeved dress as her ninja attire, complete with purple stockings, boots with white soles, and wore her forehead protector like a bandana, she also carrying a long sword on her back. The guy had dark skin with short, spiky, white hair and dark eyes accentuated with lines curving upwards from the corners. He wore a dark outfit consisting of an overlong shirt with a hood, with red bandage handguards and shin guards and carried a long sword on his back. The last girl was a fair-skinned woman of tall stature and was wearing a stoic, aloof expression on her face. She has blue eyes and straight, blonde hair framing her face cut in an asymmetrical bob style with the front bangs reaching her shoulders. She wore a very low-cut outfit with mesh underneath, a short skirt and red handguards, high boots and a short of girdle that helped highlight her cleavage, she also had her tanto strapped horizontally to her lower back her name was Samui. Did you hear that the mask guy has multiple bloodlines? said Karui. Interesting we must keep watch over him, said Samui. Dame it what if during the exam I have to face against him and we know that he's extremely strong him being S rank, said Omoi. Stop overthinking about Omoi, said Karui. But Omoi dos have a point he will no doubt be very strong, said Samui. The rakage may want to know about him being in Kanona, said Karui. We'll tell Motoi about it the moment when we see him, said Samui. It's a shame Lord B couldn't come and see us in the Chunin exams, said Omoi. Omoi you know why Lord B couldn't come with this, said Samui. Hey Samui what do you think will happen if we face against him, said Karui. 
If what that silver hair guy said is true not well, said Samui. With the other team from Kumo, I didn't think we might be facing against someone who is already in the bingo book said C. Dame I hoped this thing would be dull, Darui said in a lazy tone. There's no doubt about that if we face against him the heat of our bottles will be hot, said Atsui. Hey Darui won't your dad like to know that someone who possesses multiple bloodlines? C asked curiously. Yeah I think so, said Darui, with the team from Iwa. Great we got to deal with, said Kuritsuchi. It's surprising that he possess multiple bloodlines, said Hojo. The Suchikage will want to know someone like is here, said Akatsuki. Yeah no kidding, said Hojo. Hopefully grandpa got a plan to deal with this, said Kuritsuchi. Back with the Konoha ninja, his a bit well in form and form, Naruto thought, the info Kabuto had on him was the same as the one that many villages had on him in their records. No way. Why would the Hokage allow someone like him enter the exams, Kiba said. Hey I'm just reading what's on the card, said Kabuto. After everyone had gotten over the shock about Naruto, Zarif Kabuto then went on to explain how the top genin from Konoha, Kiri, Kumo, Suna, Aim, Kusa, Taki, Getsu and a small recently new shinobi village Otto were here. Suddenly Naruto sensed an incoming attack toward the large group of genin and he wasn't the only one who sensed the incoming attack as so did Kabuto. Both of them turned around to find a sound nin with spiky, dark hair jumped in the air using one of the benches and leveraged a couple of kunais at them which they easily dodged. Suddenly, a second sound nin appeared in front of Kabuto, whose face was completely covered in gauze only leaving his left eye uncovered and with a strange device on his left arm. It seemed to Naruto that the focus of attack of the sound team was Kabuto. He watched with interest as the sound mummy nin swung his left arm in the face of Kabuto, which the elder boy dodged with ease. Whilst all the others looked amazed at the reaction time of Kabuto for dodging the attack, Naruto felt disturbance in the air between Kabuto and the sound mummy nin, which made him, narrowed his eyes. He wondered the reason for the disturbance air between the two ninjas. His eyes narrowed when he saw the glass of Kabuto's glasses cracked and fell to the ground. Naruto looked at the sound genin who had swung his arm at Kabuto. He is equipped with earmuffs and his arm has a metal gauntlet. Naruto thought. The only thing that has physical ability to strike yet remain unseen is the air or the sound. What's going on? You definitely avoided that punch, why did you glasses break? Spoke Sasuke as he stood forward, with an annoyed and confused expression on his face. This question was of course shared by many of the others, who were watching the incident and unlike Naruto didn't know what truly happened but just when everyone thought that was it, Kabuto fell to his knees and threw up which received many more worried and confused looks from all the different genins. It seems that you're not as good as I thought you would be, given that you are a veteran of the Chunin exam, spoke the gauze-wearing boy named Dosu, who stood in front of Kabuto with the rest of his team. Write this in your card, the three genin from Otogakure will definitely make it to Chunin, spoke the black spiky-haired boy named Zaku. As Zaku said this, Many of the others in the room stared at Dosu and his teammates, with some curiosity over how Dosu took Kabuto out, after he dodged Dosu's punch. I will not accept that kind of behavior in here got that. A figure that was one with the smoke that had been born within the room said sternly glaring at the students. He leaked out a dose of his killing intent to make his point. The killing intent prompted the genins to nod vigorously. The figure smile. Alright you maggots take you sits now he said in a firm voice making the genins hurry up to take their sits. The genins took each of their assigned sits and looked back at the man in front of the room. I am Morino Ibiki. I am the proctor of the first test of the Chunin selection exams. The proctor introduced himself to the genins. Those who do not follow my rules will automatically fail, he said as he released a burst of key scaring some genins in the room. I will not accept that kind of behavior in here got that. A figure that was one with the smoke that had been born within the room said sternly glaring at the students. He leaked out a dose of his killing intent to make his point. The killing intent prompted the genins to nod vigorously. The figure smile. All right you maggots take you sits now, he said in a firm voice making the genins hurry up to take their sits. The genins took each of their assigned sits and looked back at the man in front of the room. I am Morino Ibiki. I am the proctor of the first test of the Chunin selection exams. The proctor introduced himself to the genins. 
Those who do not follow my rules will automatically fail, he said as he released a burst of key scaring some genins in the room. Now after Ibiki and the other Chunin examiners arrived, they quickly took charge of the room, where they had everyone quickly take seats. When Naruto's name was called out, he found himself being seated next to Hinata, which of course he did not mind, although the young Hyuga girl was very nervous sitting next to someone as dangerous as Naruto. After everyone was seated Ibiki began to explain the rules of the test to everyone, where much to everyone's surprise they found it to be a written exam. Ibiki also then went on to explain that cheating was strictly forbidden, where the other Chunin examiners would be watching them closely and if they were found cheating, three times, then they would be disqualified from the exam. Once he had explained the rules, Ibiki then handed out the exam sheets and stated that they had one hour to do the paper, whereupon hearing this, all the genin immediately began writing. When the exam started Naruto looked over the questions and found them easy but he could tell that they were supposed to be difficult for the others and Naruto thought that if they were only a few people who were taking the test and could answer them correctly then the others were forced to cheat their way. Once finished Naruto just sat there and waited, he watched several other teams being caught by Ibiki and the Chunin examiners, where they were automatically failed and sent out of the room. By the time of the last five minutes of the exam, about a third of the room had been emptied. When the time had come for the final question had come, Ibiki spoke, well now it seems that it time for the final question, although I have to say there are more of you than I thought there would be. But still there is one thing, that I did not mention earlier when I explained the rules of the test to you, that rule being that you can choose to take the tenth of final question or not. Upon hearing this, the examinees were of course surprised and slightly confused at what Ibiki was saying. Choose to take the tenth question, what the hell do you mean by that? asked Tamari. It's simple really if you choose not to take the exam your points from this exam will be reduced to zero, where both you and your teammates will automatically fail the test, explained Ibiki. Then what's the point of giving us the choice, of course we're going to take the question, stated a genin from Kusa. Well you see there is actually more to this rule, replied Ibiki, which made the examinees more nervous. For if you do the tenth question and you get it wrong, you'll not only just fail the exam, but you'll also lose your privilege for taking the Chunin exam forever. What the hell kind of dumb is rule is that, Kiba said as he stood up and pointed accusingly at Ibiki. There are people who were a part of the Chunin exam in the past so how can get be part of this year? At this Ibiki just chuckled darkly, making many of the genin nervous. I'm afraid to tell you that you all were unlucky, as this year because I'm the one making the rules, which is why I am giving you all the option of quitting, replied Ibiki and then continued. Those of you who are not confident in answering the final question can quite now and take the exam next year and the year after that, stated Ibiki, before chuckling darkly again. I highly doubt that the other villages would agree to something like this and if by the small chance that you're telling the truth there is still another way to become a chunin besides talking this exam like being promoted by your cage for your actions on duty so I have nothing to worry about, said Naruto. After hearing this, Ibiki looked around the room since after Naruto's little speech, the frightened and uncertain looks that were on many of the faces turned to looks of confidence and determination, the direct opposite of what they were a moment ago. Upon seeing how the atmosphere had been completely changed by Naruto's speech as the Konoha interrogator couldn't help but smirk. So this is the member Zarif Atsusuki, pretty interesting kid, he completely wiped out everyone's uncertainty. 80 Genin, E.H., more than I expect, but still. Since you all seem ready to take the question, I've only one thing to say, you all pass, Ibiki announced. After hearing this, the genin were of course surprised and confused at what Ibiki had said. After getting over her surprise, Sakura imminently took up and spoke, wait, what do you mean by we passed? What about the tenth question? At this Ibiki smiled, the choice to take the question was the tenth question, as there was no actually question to begin with. So what were all those other questions, were they all just a waste? Asked Tamari, with annoyance, at how they had been all duped. No, they had a purpose as well, they were all to test you information gathering skills, explained Ibiki, where after seeing the slight confused look on some of the genin's faces. He went on to explain the objective and goals of the first test, and how they were all tested and how the test involved skills needed to be a successful chunin. During the explanation, Ibiki even removed his bandana to reveal all the scars on his head that he received from being tortured, showing what you've to go through, to keep the secret of your village from its enemies. 
Once the explanations were finished a round object suddenly burst though one of the windows, after which a large banner with the words, Second Examiner, Midarashi Anko is here, appeared in front of Ibiki along with a tall violet-haired woman, who wore a tan overcoat, complete with a fitted mesh bodysuit that stretched from her neck down to her thighs along with a dark orange miniskirt. Upon her arrival the woman named Anko cried out, I am the sexy and single second examiner Anko Midarashi, now let's go to the next exam, after which Anko then pumped up her fist into the air and shouted out, follow me. At this everyone in the room just stared at her with looks of disbelief. You really need to learn to grasp the atmosphere, Anko, stated Ibiki as he stepped out from behind the banner, with a dull look on his face, where the violet-haired woman blushed in embarrassment. As Naruto looked at Anko whilst unlike the most of the other guys in the room who were admiring Anko's looks and body Naruto was more forced to the dark chakra coming from the right side of her neck. So she's Orochimaru former apprentice, thought Naruto. So that's dad's former appreciate, thought Log. After getting over her embarrassment, Anko counted the number of remaining genin, where she found that there were 8 genin left. Ibiki you let 26 teams pass? Your test must have been too soft, said Anko. Or that there were quite a number of excellent genin this year, Ibiki replied. Huh. Well it doesn't matter, Anko replied before a sinister grin approved on her face, as I'm going to make more than half of these teams fail the next test. Upon hearing this many of the genin became nervous, especially give the sinister looking smirk that appeared on her face. Now everyone to the training ground 44. Be there in 20 minutes or you will fail. Let's go, Anko said and everyone follow right behind most boys who were checking Anko's ass. Outside of the forest of death the training ground 44 also known as the forest of death is one of Konoha's deadliest training ground reserved only for Chunin, Jonin and Anbu. The forest itself was home to various plants and deadly animals from big spiders to gigantic bears and tigers. The forest of death is the traditional place for second round of every Chunin exams done in the leaf. The Chunin exams are hosted in various countries and rotated. Every four years the Chunins happen in the leaf unless something happen in the village that it is supposed to be held at. To everyone from Konohagakir the forest of death, as the name says, it's hell and one place you don't come near but obviously this doesn't apply to the crazy snake lady, also known as Anko, to her this place is her home away from home and the reason she is always in charge of the second round. Of the original 200s applicants to the Chunin exams more than half were failed in the first task. Now we are currently at the entrance of the forest of death. This place gives me the creeps, said Sakura nervously holding onto Sasuke's right shoulder as she looked at the dark forest. All right maggots. This is the place for your second test, training area 44, or better known as the forest of death, said Anko. Just then Naruto and his teammates sensed someone with high levels of chakra entered the group and it felt dark and Log was all too familiar with who it was. So he's pretending to be a genin to get close to Sasuke, thought Naruto. So he really is here after all, thought Log. And soon Enot you kids will find out soon why this place is called the forest of death. Anko said with a sinister smirk making most of the genins gulped out of fear while some just shuddered it off Naruto could tell that Anko liked to plant seeds of fear within the hearts of the other people. Oh yeah before we start I would like you to sign these papers. Anko said as she held a paper in her hand, the genin looked at her curiously, in this test there will be killings, and I don't want to be responsible for your deaths so you have to sign these waivers. The genin looked at her some thinking they should quit, they were going to do the second test in a place called a forest of death and now there was going to be some killings in the forest, it was too much for some genins. I will explain the test before you sign the waivers. This test will be a survival test, the training ground 44 has locked gates, a river, forest and a tower at the center. From each gate there is about 10 kilometers until the tower. Anko then paused for a moment to allow her words sink in. In this training ground you will compete in an all out, no rules scroll battle. Each team will be given one heaven or earth scroll. For a team to pass you have to present both heaven and earth scrolls to the tower in the center of the training ground. There is a time limit. You have only 5 days to get into the tower with both scrolls to pass the test. If you arrive after 120 hours you will fail the test. There is not quitting once you enter the training ground. You will be in there for 5 days. Anko announced to the listening genin. What do we do about food? Choji asked while eating bag of chips, 
he was very worried that he would have to be trapped in the training ground without his favorite food barbecue and chips. The forest is full of food, all you have to do is avoid man-eating bugs, poisonous insects and plants. The genin shuddered at the thought of being eaten by bugs. The forest was indeed a scary place, the forest will be full of enemies, so if you get to the tower faster with both scrolls you will avoid enemies, she paused for a moment before going on, now let's get on to who gets disqualified, the first I have already told you, which is not being able to get to the tower with both scrolls and in time, she said as the genin nodded. Second is those who lose a teammate or a teammate gets killed. Lastly you must not open the scroll before you reach the tower. As Chunin you be expected to courier important documents. This will be a test to your trustworthiness. She finished her explanation to the Genins. Come over here and take the waivers and sign them. Anko ordered as the Genins went over to her and took the waivers to sign. Some were hesitant to do it at first but every single one of them eventually did sign them and they then handed them back over to Anko. Who then given each team their scroll but either heaven or earth scroll which she made sure that no other team would know which team held the scroll that needed to pass the exam. This was to avoid any team going after a specific team and it would also cut down numbers because a team would take a scroll from another team they have defeated even though it is the same as theirs. She did not tell them that, they did not need to know it. Final word of advice before you lot head out, don't get killed. She said with a maniacal grin that made many of the genin think that she actually wanted them to kill each other. Each team went away to their assigned gate and got ready for the second part of the Chunin exams. Inside the forest of death, so how exactly do you want to do this? Yato asked curiosity. Swift and quickly, said Naruto before he turned his attention to Log. Did you get the intel? Naruto asked. Yes I had one of my snakes secretly watch and I know which team has what scroll said log good then we will target the nearest team with the earth scroll that we need understand said naruto and what exactly are your plans for him log asked curiosity don't worry i remember my promise that i made to you log you'll be the one who will kill him if i have any say in the matter but at your current strength you don't stand a chance against him sure you would be able to do some good damage to him but he would win and take you away with him said naruto i understand said log that being said it would be useful if I use invasion on him and get to know more about his plans and with it I'll use to my advance, thought Naruto. It's Gauther from the seven deadly sins magic ability but in this story it's similar to the Yamanaka clan mind techniques. Now which is nearest team to us that has the earth scroll, Naruto asked curiosity. That will be a team from Kusagakure, said Log. Then let's go and get ourselves earth scroll, said Naruto. With team from Kusa A injure Kusa Shinobi was sent. Flying into a large tree next to his teammate another injure Kusa Shinobi whilst their Kunoichi was next to Naruto unharm and reason why when Naruti's team located the Kusa team they found the male team members bullying the Kunoichi and from what Naruto could sense from the Kunoichi she had a unique chakra and when one of the Kusa Shinobi bit the Kunoichi Naruto could sense his chakra which was at a low amount from being used to increase their speed was refilled. So Naruto had Log and Yato beat both Kusa Shinobi whiles. Naruto rescued the Kunoichi and as he did he got curious. About the girl's ability so he used his invasion ability. A mind based jutsu that doesn't require hand signs. And as he did he discover about the girl's name was. Karen and her past and how she was being used a nothing. More than a tool but what was shocking was that he. Found out that her mother was originally from Uzu Shiogakure. And after its destruction she fled to Kusa and in exchange for her safety she would use her unique chakra to heal their injured shinobi and Naruto saw how her mother was used so much that it killed her and Karen had an older sister named Tuyuya who mysteriously disappeared which made Naruto wondered after seeing what Kusa has done to Karen's family it made Naruto wondered that Kusa had something to do with it so Naruto decided something must be done for the crimes that Kusa has done to his fellow clan members. Yes I am making Tuyuya Karen's sister. You people disgust me, Naruto said angrily which shock log and Yato as they never seen Naruto angrily before. W what d do y u m mean, the one of the Kusa shinobi said scare. You use her as nothing more than tool, Naruto said as he was walked towards the two Kusa shinobi. Why do you kind what's happened to her, the other Kusa shouted angrily. Because I am from the same clan as her, Naruto shouted angrily. We're from the same clan thought Karen. 
W wait I and nobody T told UST that Y or R related, the scare Kusa said. And it doesn't change a thing if you did know because you still use her like a tool, said Naruto. Naruto pointed his right hand and suddenly lightning shot out of his fingers tips and it went through both Kusa shinobi chests hitting their hearts killing him. The way Naruto did it is similar to how Akano Himejima used her lightning. After a couple minutes had passed Yato decided to speak, are you okay Naruto? Yato asked worry. Naruto didn't say a thing instead he pointed a finger at Karen who panicked thinking that he was going to kill her as well instead a little light shot out of his fingers hitting Karen's head this was also invasion broadcast technique which allow Naruto to transfer information to other people and Naruto then created a shadow clones to take Karen back to the hotel that Naruto and the others were staying and as the shadow clones walk over to Karen and teleported away with her. Get the earth scroll and go to the tower I'll be there soon, said Naruto. Where exactly are you going Naruto? Log asked curiosity. To let off some stress and I know who exactly who to use, Naruto said walking towards the dark chakra within the forest. After a couple minutes had passed Yato decided to speak, are you okay Naruto? Yato asked worry. Naruto didn't say a thing instead he pointed a finger at Karen who panicked thinking that he was going to kill her as well instead a little light shot out of his fingers hitting Karen's head this was also invasion broadcast technique which allow Naruto to transfer information to other people and Naruto then created a shadow clones to take Karen back to the hotel that Naruto and the others were staying and as the shadow clones walk over to Karen and teleported away with her. Get the earth scroll and go to the tower I'll be there soon, said Naruto. Where exactly are you going Naruto? Log asked curiosity. To let off some stress and I know who exactly who to use, Naruto said walking towards the dark chakra within the forest. And now with Sasuke and Sakura Sasuke stared at the strange Kusa Nin that appeared not long after him and Sakura went looking for another team to get their scroll while Sai went off by himself to do the same but Sakura didn't want to leave Sasuke alone. The Kusa Nin chuckled looking at him like he was prey and Sasuke could see the Kusa Nin's eyes were the eyes of a predator with Sasuke as nothing more than prey and the predator was staring at him in its glory. Come at me with everything you got Sasuke-kun. The Kusa Nin spoke with a grin. Sasuke did not want to be told twice. He charged at the Kusa Nin. The Kusa Nin blocked a kick that was directed to her temple by Sasuke. Sasuke tried to kick the Kusa Nin again but his attempt was blocked again. Sasuke jumped back from the predator and activated his Sharingan. The Kusa Nin seemed to like seeing the Sharingan being activated. Yes, that's it Sasuke-kun show me what you can do, she thought as she continued to chuckle mirthlessly unnerving Sasuke. He dashed forward at her and attempted to punch her on the face. But the Kusa Nin leaned back to avoid his attack. Sasuke leaned forward and tried another punch at the gut but the Kusa Nin jumped to avoid being hit. Sasuke dashed forward not giving his opponent rest. He jumped up into the air and attempted to punch the Kusa Nin while Earth pulled him down. The Kusa Nin brought out both her hands and blocked Sasuke's attempt. She tried punching Sasuke on his chest but Sasuke was able to see the attack thanks to his Sharingan. He jumped back to avoid being hit. The Kusa Nin rushed at Sasuke and tried kicking him but Sasuke blocked the kick with his knee. Sasuke's right fist flew into the Kusa Nin's face but she bended down to avoid the attack. Sasuke saw an opening and got down attempting a leg sweep. But the Kusa Nin jumped returning the favor with a kick to the face. He was able to see the kick coming but he was unable to neither dodge nor block the incoming attack that Sasuke into a tree. Sasuke hit a tree with a grunt that followed after the impact. Is this all you can do Sasuke-kun? Even you your Sharingan? The Kusa Nin said while chuckling earning a glare from Sasuke. He was trying to understand just who the person was. He could not land a hit on the person. The Kusa Nin did not wait for Sasuke to clear his thoughts. He dashed forward to the Uchiha. Sasuke was forced to dodge a power punch that shattered the tree branch he was standing at. The Kusa Nin charged at Sasuke again. They engaged in a taijutsu fight. Sasuke smirked as he got a hit at the Kusa Nin face. He did not stop there he added a kick to the chest that sent the Kusa Nin flying. He continued smirking thinking that it was not hopeless as he had thought at first. Sasuke did hand seals for his favorite jutsu, fire release, great fireball, he muttered as the fireball sped at the kusa nin. His smirk widened when he saw his jutsu hit the kusa nin. 
He ended his jutsu and saw the Kusa Nin standing there with his devilish grin placed on as if nothing had happened. His eyes widened in disbelief. It should not have been possible for someone to take on the jutsu head on and still stand like nothing had happened. He watched in disgust as the skin of Kusa Nin's face began to peel off revealing a more pale skin underneath. The Kusa Nin blurred out of view and appeared behind Sasuke. Sasuke was kicked hard on his back and sent crashing towards a tree. Ah! Grunted as he hit the tree, he got panting and looked back at the Kusa Nin. The Kusa Nin looked at Sasuke with calculating eyes. Sasuke was indeed a skilled young boy. She had proven it and her eyes liked what he had witnessed from Sasuke. S stay back, D don't come any closer. Sasuke stuttered out seeing the Kusa Nin making his way to him. Orochimaru did not stop, he slowly made his way over to Sasuke with calculating eyes. Do you want power Sasuke-kun? The Kusa Nin asked with a wide grin. Sasuke lost his fear and took a confused look on his face. He wanted power what confused him was why Orochimaru would ask him the kind of question. The Kusa Nin stopped in front of Sasuke and spoke again. I know you want power to kill Itachi Uchiha. Sasuke kun and I can give you that power. Sasuke's eyes burned with hatred the moment Itachi's name was registered to his mind. He hated nothing and no one more than his older brother Itachi. His neck extended in lengths that no human neck should extend. Two large fangs grew from his mouth as his head traveled towards Sasuke's neck. Sasuke just froze not knowing what to do as the Kusa Nin's fangs became one with Sasuke's neck before Orochimaru retrieved his head. Sasuke let out a pained scream before falling down. Sasuke kun. Sakura yelled out while rushing at the fallen form of Sasuke. She had heard his pained scream, it was not healthy, she ran to see if he was okay. The Kusa Nin looked at Sakura with a wide grin. He chuckled darkly, he had achieved what he had come for and more. It was just a matter of time before Sasuke came to him looking for power. What did you do to Sasuke kun? Sakura demanded forgetting that the person in her front was a senin and could kill her in a second, she was just too angry that he had hurt Sasuke. The Kusa Nin looked at Sakura with amused by her bravery. I simply gave him a gift that will help him avenge his clan. The Kusa Nin replied. How interesting, a voice spoke up and from the sound from it was above them. The grass Nin and two genins looked toward voice direction to see Zarif standing on a tree branch watching everything and he had an amusing look on his face. Well, well, why it is Zarif Otsutsuki and what are you doing here? The grass Kunoichi asked, as she recognized the person from the bingo book. Orochimaru of the legendary Sanin. What are you doing here? Don't tell me that you were demoted you to a mere genin. How pitiful, Naruto said mocking tone. Sakura paled at hearing name because why wouldn't she everyone has heard of Orochimaru, a genius shinobi who had trained by the third Hokage along with Jiraiya and Senju Tsunade. A man who considered the foremost ninjutsu expert, and along with his two other teammates, he had dubbed the title of the legendary Sanin due to their famous battle against Hanzo of the Salamander. He was also one of the Leaf's worst traitors, an s rank missing nin, who wanted for inhumane experimentation on citizens of the Leaf and most likely, many other villages and countries. Now then why don't you remor that ruined face and show you're really one, said Naruto. Funny coming someone who is wearing a mask, said Orochimaru. At least it isn't burnt like that face you're wearing, said Naruto. Very well I will do what you ask, Orochimaru said remove the rest of the burnt face to reveal his true face. He has very pale skin, golden eyes with slitted pupils, purple markings around his eyes and fang-like teeth. He also has pronounced cheekbones and straight waist-length black hair with some locks covering and framing his face or to his shoulders, he was wearing grey garbs with a black polo and pants underneath, a thick purple rope belt tied in a large knot behind his back, blue tomo-shaped earrings, and shinobi sandals with bandages around his calves. It's good that you came save me the trouble of hunting you down Zarif, said Orochimaru. If you want me so bad, then here I am and you better be ready for a major beat down, as I'm in a bad mood right now, Naruto said angrily. Fire style. Fire god bellow. Naruto shouted as he breathed out a massive dark red fireball heading straight at Orochimaru who managed to dodge it just in time and as the smoke cleared everyone was able to see the damage that it caused and they were shocked by it because it had destroyed everything for a couple miles. What the hell is that kind of just you was that, Orochimaru thought. 
I never seen or heard of a fire technique like that I must know obtain it, thought Sasuke. What kind of monster is this guy and he's supposed to be our age, thought Sakura. I don't think I've ever seen this jutsu that powerful before very impressive, Orochimaru said. Well, thank you, but you should never take your eyes off your opponent, Naruto said, suddenly appearing beside Orochimaru and he punched him in the face breaking some of his teeth and damaging his face and it had then sent Orochimaru flying into the trees. That strength of his it reminds me of Tsunade's, thought Orochimaru. Don't tell me the great and powerful Orochimaru the white snake is defeated just by one punch to the face, said Naruto. Ha 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 you wish it would be that easy but now boy. You will surfer, Orochimaru said before he change at. Naruto in high speed that made him look like a blur. However to Orochimaru's surprise Naruto managed to. Dodge his attacks and as Naruto continued to dodge he. Ready right fist and he then turn it into steel thanks. To his steel release as well as channel his chakra. Into his fist and Naruto punch Orochimaru directly in the chest breaking and cracking some of Orochimaru's ribs and causing Orochimaru to cough out blood whilst this was happening Naruto use his left hand to shot out a small light from his middle fingertip which hit Orochimaru's head which gave Naruto all the knowledge he need from Orochimaru and Naruto then kick Orochimaru away before he place his right fist on his left hand palm which then started to freeze the air around his hands. Ice make. Floor. Naruto said as he slammed his hands on the floor freezing the ground for a mile that surrounded them then Naruto stench his arms. Combination. Scorch explosion release. Naruto said as he fired multiple large orange flame orbs that surrounded Orochimaru. Interesting and what exactly are these things? Orochimaru asked curiosity. A fuse of explosion style and scorch style, said Naruto. So he also possessed those bloodlines as well incredible I have never met someone who was born with that many bloodlines before if I'm not mistaken when he punch his fist look like it was made out of metal does that mean he also possessed steel release as well? Orochimaru thought whilst also thinking all the experiments he could do if obtained some of Zarif's DNA. I bet if I touch them they will go off and with them surrounded me it will be a problem to get past and I can't go underground thanks to him freezing the floor, thought Orochimaru. I can tell what you think and you're correct if you touch them they will go off but they will also go off automatically as well, said Naruto. As one of orbs behind Orochimaru went off creating a large explosion it caused another orb to explode and another after that and together they created a massive explosion. Combination technique. Chain explosion, Naruto announced. As the smoke clear it revealed Orochimaru who was bleeding badly and was damaged all over his body with his right arm missing having been destroyed from Naruto's explosion attack. My my you are really something, I wouldn't mind having you as a vessel, Orochimaru said as he opened his mouth to inhuman proportions and spited out another Orochimaru that wasn't damaged left the skin of the old behind. That was one of the most disguising thing I have ever saw in my life, Naruto thought. I better leave before Konoha gets wind of me being here, thought Orochimaru. I would like to keep going but I have other things to attend to, Orochimaru said before he disappear. Well I better be going, Naruto said as he was about to walk back to the tower. Wait, Sakura shouted. Hm what is it, Naruto answered. Do you know what that man did to Sasuke-kun, Sakura shouted. Yes I do know, said Naruto. Then tell me what is it so can help Sasuke kun, Sakura shouted. No, I won't tell you, said Naruto. Why not? Sakura shouted angrily. Because why should I? said Naruto before he disappeared, not wanting to deal with Sakura fangirl attitude. How dare he refuse to tell me how to help Sasuke kun, Sakura shouted angrily. How is he so strong? I'm a member of the Uchiha clan, I should have that power, not some mask wearing nobody, thought Sasuke. Just then Sai came out riding an ink lion. Hey guys I managed to get two scrolls one earth scroll and one heaven scroll, said Sai. Thank goodness at least we'll pass this part of the exam, thought Sakura. With Anko Anko Midarashi cursed under breath as she leapt through the forest. It was already dusk, and there had still been no sign of her target her former teacher Orochimaru. It's almost nightfall. I must find him quickly. Once it gets totally dark. I will be at further disadvantage against him, Anko said aloud as she traveled. But why is he at the time like this? What is his planning? She chuckled and shook her head as she leapt the tree to tree. The only sound she made with each leap being her own breath. 
Well, it makes no difference, she went on. If you have come to this village then we will settle this thing now. You are now the bingo book level s dangerous person. She jumped from branch to branch, not making a sound. I must stop you even if it costs me my life. And if that's not possible, I must slow you down until the anbu arrives however just then she pained from the right side of her neck and she heard a creepy laugh from behind her. She quickly turned around and saw him Orochimaru just standing there with an amusement look on his face seeing his former apprentice, it's been a long time, Anko-chan. You can cut the pleasantries Orochimaru, as you're a wanted S-class criminal and I, am going to kill you, even if it cost me my life, spoke Anko with the utmost seriousness, where four Senban needles appeared out of her right hand code sleeve and into her hand. It is my duty after all, I was once your student and I learned everything I know from you, continued Anko where she then prepared to throw her senban needles at the former sanin. Orochimaru of course just smiled at this, where he then spat out his tongue, which stretched to an impossible length and headed straight for Anko, who quickly jumped up into the air to avoid it and landed on the trunk of another tree opposite the one that Orochimaru had merged with, where she channeled her chakra to her feet to keep from falling off the tree. Sadly though, Orochimaru's tongue followed after her, where it then wrapped itself around Anko's right arm and pulled her back onto the tree branch she was previously on. Anko although quickly countered by holding out her left hand and the cried out, hidden shadow snake hands, after which several snakes erupted from the sleeves of her arms and flew towards the snake sonin and pulled him out of the tree trunk. There's not a chance in hell that I going to let you escape, cried Anko as she pulled Orochimaru towards her and slammed him into the tree behind her and retracted her snakes. Once she had retracted her snakes back into her sleeves, Anko then pinned Orochimaru to the tree by piercing both their left hands together with a kanai, while at the same time she took hold of his other hand with her right and formed a seal with them. I have you now, said Anko with a smile, as she saw the realization dawn on Orochimaru when he recognized the seal. That's right, you and I are going to die together here, said Anko, as she prepared her jutsu and thought, twin snakes mutual death technique. But before she could finish the jutsu, she suddenly heard Orochimaru speak from behind her. I'm afraid you will die alone here, Anko chan, Orochimaru's voice said behind Anko. Surprised at this, Anko quickly turned around, where at the same time, the night moon came out of from behind the clouds, showing Orochimaru standing directly behind her. Seeing the confused look on his former apprentice's face, Orochimaru decided to explain, I'm afraid all you have there is a replacement. Hearing this, Anko quickly turned around and saw that the Orochimaru that she had caught was indeed a clone, where when she turned it immediately reverted into mud, revealing it as a, earth style, shadow clone. You shouldn't use the forbidden technique that I taught you Anko chan, since you're one of Konoha's Tokabetsu Janin now, said Orochimaru with a smile as he slowly walked to Anko. Angered by how she had been tricked by the former Sanin, Anko quickly pulled the kanai she had stabbed herself with and threw it at Orochimaru. But before it could hit the sanin in the head, he caught it with ease between his two front fingers. It's useless Anko-chan, you don't have the power nor the skill to defeat me, said Orochimaru, where he then did a single one-handed hand seal and activated Anko's curse seal, causing the young woman to fall to her knees in pain. After Anko fell to her knees, Orochimaru slowly walked up to her and lifted her head up slightly so that he could look her directly in the face. Why have you returned? asked Anko as she tried to fight the pain. I must say, I'm actually disappointed of you Anko-chan, we haven't seen each other in years and you have done nothing but treated me so coldly, taunted Orochimaru. Have you come here to kill the fourth Hokage? asked Anko, as she held her left shoulder. Oh no, as sadly I don't have enough followers to attempt that just yet, replied Orochimaru with a smile. I actually came here to observe and test a young genin here, who has show more promise than you did so I placed my curse seal on him, said Orochimaru. You monster you did that to a genin, stated Anko. I am certain the boy will survive however there is another that caught my attention greatly, said Orochimaru. Someone caught your attention, said Anko. Yes he did and he is something else, asked Orochimaru as he cupped Anko's face. You just can't forgive me for using and tossing you aside, can you? At hearing this, Anko glared angrily at her former sensei, as she remembered how he used her. In many ways, both boys show ever more potential than you did, explained Orochimaru, for you see, one of them has inherited unique abilities of the Uchiha clan, 
while the other has both abilities and skills far beyond his years and could become someone who could change the world in the future, said Orochimaru. At hearing this Anko eyes widened in surprise, as she quickly realized who the other person Orochimaru was talking about. You mean Zerif Atsusuki? said Anko. Oh yes, Zerf kun especially shows a great deal of power, way beyond what Sasuke kun, as I don't think I've ever seen so much raw potential and power in one person before. Either he or Sasuke kun could become perfect candidates for my plans in the future, answered Orochimaru. Getting a little greedy, aren't we? Going after two genin at once, taunted Anko. Perhaps, but it would be such a waste not to, replied Orochimaru with a smile, after which he then stood up and started to walk away from Anko. I will keep close eye on them. As Orochimaru walked away, he then suddenly turned around, also whatever happens, do not cancel the exam. Three of my followers are taking part of the exam and I look forward to see how they fare. Should you cancel the exam, then Konoha's fate is sealed, and I will destroy it far sooner. Once Orochimaru had said this, he then turned away from Anko and disappeared in a whirl of purple flames, leaving Anko alone. Orochimaru! Anko yelled, but her former sensei had already gone from there. She rushed toward the tower to inform the fourth Hokage about this new development. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.